start going to the bathroom before a show. I. Oh my God. Should I just pee now? Should I leave? Should I come back? Should we start again? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hit the like button. Welcome to the program. My name is Patrick Melton. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. How do we start? I ate a granola bar and my mic's getting all mershed up with little mersh particles. You ever have a microphone that just gets a little mersh? Particles. Uh, we are nine minutes late. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for counting. <laughs> Imagine me giving a fuck. I Look, you know, I... Um, I even came up here early. I thought I, the point is I'll never have my stuff together. You can eat my asshole about it, suck my dick, lick my nuts, uh, get my balls, get my balls. What do you do after you get them? What do you do after you get them? Do me a favor though. Hit the like button. Welcome to the show. Um, oh God. Atlantic city is this week, Friday. Uh, this Thursday night, I'm flying out to Atlantic City, baby. I will be uh, first class on Atl on American Airlines. Chad's going on what? Spirit, is it? I'm a huge Delta snob. Unless there's a cheaper flight somewhere, then I... Oh my God, it's gonna be a nothing. It's gonna be a big nothing. Everybody, don't get your hopes up. I know a lot of people are like, uh, ooh, what's gonna happen? It's, it's gonna be crazy. It's not, it's not. I mean, if you listen to Chad, it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> if you listen to everybody else, it's not, it's not. I, I mean, the only people who are afraid of a fight are like Chad and KB. And those are the people who've been told repeatedly by everyone, like no one wants to fight you. No one's coming after you. And the, and yet those are the two people going like, I dare you to come up to me. I dare you to start a fight. Take one step towards me. And everybody's like, we're not literally. No one is threatening to do that. Nobody's going to step towards you. Yeah. Well, you better not. It's like, okay. Okay. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking forward to it. We got a lot of uh, people going out there on uh, in all camps, in all uh, directions. Who will see who? Who will be around? Who will go to what? You know, I think the people at home have this idea that Chad will be there and Gina will be there and Ray will be there and I'll be there and Tukey will be there and Kevin will be there and just going to be awkward as we all stare at each other, but I don't think that's going to happen at all. I don't think there will be a moment like that at the event simply for the fact that everyone is coming at a different time. Chad has commandeered the weekend and he keeps saying like he calls Atlantic city, the city, he calls it like it's an event five days till Atlantic city, get your tickets for Atlantic city. So he's taken over the event that was a Super Bowl meetup on the 11th, and now it's the 10th and his show. Get your tickets, meet us in Atlantic City, come on out. You know. So, um, I don't know why that happened. And then now Gino's taking over that event from Chad, because Chad's a cuck. The minute a manlier man shows up, and he's like, I'm going to handle this, son. Chad goes, oh, God, thank you and just hands it over. So now Chad's doing like an opening set. Gino's closing it out. Gino's taking it all seriously now. Like it's a real gig. It lets you know where all these guys heads are at. You know, Gino made fun of it. MLC cuck fest, fag fest, bunch of loser fans. I would never hang out with these guys. Now it's like the most prominent event on Gino's calendar. He has no other stand-up events coming up, but don't forget to get your Tennessee Beer Hall, Atlantic City. So he's taking it real seriously all of a sudden. Which just lets you know how fragile these guys are. It's like a minute ago they were all losers, but now they want to include you and give you $200 and some wings. And now it's like, put it on my calendar. 
That's a real gig. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's just pathetic. It's just all over the place. I can't wait. But I don't think I don't think these people will even be together, you know? Chad and Gino, they'll be hanging out at another venue. Kevin might not even come in till Sunday. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's only got to be getting worse. Hit the like button. We got a new week of nonsense on the Nobody Likes Onions program all the way to Friday, which there will be no show because the traveling. Um, but other than that, we should have a good, fun week. It's going to be a nice time. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. There was like Mr. P, the ghost of Mr. P, who's vanished. We're going on like two months now. No ghost to Mr. P. He was like, I'm going to get a suite. Everyone's welcome up. We're going to party. Now that guy's gone. We got Kafer. Who knows what the fuck this guy's doing. We got Bill in Jersey. Chad's personal bodyguard. Um... It's going to be nothing. This is going to be kind of nothing. Um, Chad wants it to be something. I, I don't know. Chad really wants it to be something. I think, uh, you know, these simple-minded guys, they, they build this up in their head. They get this idea, like Chad, you know. Um, this is like a real Chad thought. Let's go. I can't wait for AC, you fat fuck. I'm going to roll right up to you. It's going to be really uncomfortable for you. Oh, yes, it will. All six, five of you. You got five, nine Chadley over here making you feel uncomfortable. Boom. It's going down. It's going down. Woo. I'm having a blast. So just, 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 I want you to really think about what this guy has worked up in his head, in his head, in his head, <laughs> he's going to roll right up to me and it's going to get real awkward for me. Now I want, I'm saying this right now, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to have a verbal altercation. I'm not going to get in some physical fisticuffs, you know, unless shoved violently in that direction. And Chad's going to come up. I mean, I really, I think Chad pictures seeing me in the casino going, hold on. And then walking straight up to me and going like, what now, Melton? What now, bitch? Let's go. Woo. Woo. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> And then me just going, you know, I'll have a cigarette or something, and I'll just be like, could we get security to handle this? <laughs> Somebody in the chat. Yeah, because you're a big pussy. It's like, you're right. I guess if he walks straight up to me, I should just start beating him mercilessly. I mean, you guys are out of your mind. First of all, like, I'm trying to catch a charge in AC. <sighs> Like, I'm trying to detour my life in that direction. I mean, there's just no... I'm fucking 44. Do you think I want to physically fight Chad? I don't want to give him the afternoon of a phone call and waste my time. I'm going to give him four to six in the state pen for a beat... To, no, I don't even know what you get for a fight. But the point is, um, Chad's like, I'm going to walk up to you. It's going to get real awkward for you. I can't... I can't... Uh, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, and I want you to really work hard on your speech, Chad, because I know you fantasized. I know you've probably touched your penis while thinking about what you're going to do to Melton and AC. I mean, really think about your speech. You're going to roll up on me, and you're going to make it real awkward for me. What's going to come out of your mouth? <laughs> I mean, the more you yell and the calmer everyone else gets... Um, the more ridiculous you look. I mean, I just want you to know that. So I'm looking forward to you making it 
real awkward for me. Woo! I mean, can you imagine Chad rolling up and just swinging? Pathetic. Uh, Kafer is in the chat again. I I don't know. Uh, I don't know what Kafer is here for, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you might be wondering what we're doing with the wall. There's no wall of uh, honor, of ring of truth, of of zeal. Uh, Zealot's Honor Square. Um, we're going to try something new. We're going to digitally recognize people. Every day I want to have an executive producer of the program that's a supporter of the show. Today's executive producer is Tiff. Tiff. We're going to, I'm going in order of, you know, how the money comes in. Anyway, today's executive uh, producer of the program is Tiff. Uh, so thank you for executive producing the show. We really appreciate you and everybody who uh, supports the show. You're not forgotten. Just to let you know, we've got the list here and this will grow as people give, you know, you want to be a part of this. No problem. I understand. We'll, uh, we'll get you on the list. <laughs> We're going digital. I'm sick of, I'm sick of wasting paper. And that way, if this, if there's any problems in this show or anything, you contact Tiff. You contact Tiff. She's the EP for this episode, and I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't want to hear anything else about it, and um, I don't know. Maybe we'll go back to the wall. Maybe we'll go back to the wall. I don't know. It, with the paper and the shuffling, you know, I don't know. Have a gift bag like last time. What's with the tude, bruh? No, no, no. Okay, for I'm getting confused because... Um, no, you're, I don't have a two. You're just a hard uh, nut to uh, suck. What is that? How people are saying it? Anyway, welcome. Hit the like button. Waiver is here. Michaela, member for 10 months. Thank you very much. You know who. Can't wait for the nothing burger story from AC. I mean, look, it's, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to do shows. Uh, Bob and I doing a show on... Um, on uh, Friday. Oh, then Mazer. This is a real offer. I want to get together with Mazer. <laughs> Tony Mazer told Chad Zumok that he was going to be in town on Friday. So, so Mazer's just going to be wandering around the board God on Friday. I'd like to extend an offer to Mazer to meet up and grab a drink on Friday. Even after the savage roasting he put down on me um, on last week's Mondays with Mazer on Thursday, you know, he said, uh, where's Melton? This is, this is a, a Mazer joke. He really said this in the show, and it devastated me. He goes, uh, is Melton going to be there? <laughs> Probably at the buffet. You know, he did it in that clean Mazer style. How did he get kicked off the radio? I don't understand. When you've got talent like that, he goes, Melton's going to be there, probably at the buffet. Because of the fat. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'd love to uh, meet up with Mazer. Um, if we're both there hanging out. Because I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people there on Friday. Me, Mazer. Oh, and then oh, and then uh, uh, Stuttering John is supposed to come. And if you know me, I'm all about um, making friends with enemies just to stick it to new enemies. So I would love to meet Stuttering John and team up to stick it to Kevin. You know, Kevin thinks he's such a tough guy. Um... And he thinks he's going to fight me. Me and Stuttering John are going to get together and start going after him. It's so funny how I can use all the words that I make fun of guys for and people just still don't pick up that it's a joke. It's like, is he saying going after? Is he saying he's a tough guy? <laughs> it's like, yes, it's a j pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> uh, my cat house is here. Is this uh, uh, my cat mouse? Is this a Mersh thing? Some sort of gay Mersh thing? I'm telling you, Melton, <laughs> I'm going to make you uncomfortable, not with fear, but embarrassment. 
when I walk up stinking of Tito's and Spirit Airlines pours, stumbling around while knocking over trash cans saying I'm doing it. Chad's going to roll. Chad's going to check into the Borgata. You know, around. can we look up what the flights are from, t- from uh, Tampa to Tampa? Hold on. Let's, let's find out when Chad's getting in. Tampa to Atlantic City. And, you know, Mosca's going to roll up and pick him up. Fuck yeah. Okay. This Friday, um, February 9th. Or no, 10th. He's flying out on the 10th. And we want one way, Tampa to Atlantic City. Spirit. <laughs> Ugh. Spirit Airlines. Okay, so there's one at 10.55 a.m. that gets in at 1.17 p.m. And there's one at 11.10 a.m. that gets in at 8.46 p.m. So I don't think he's coming that late. So he's got one option. So Chad is flying out. Hold on, Ken Mosca said I am? Is that really Ken Mosca? Are you the real Ken Mosca? I wonder if Ken Mosca hates me. I've never really gone after Ken Mosca. I mean, I don't, I just like to make fun of Chad. I don't even want to interrupt his show. I don't want to stop his show or ruin his show. Is that really Mosca or no? Can, can someone, how do we, I mean, what is a real Mosca? <laughs> Even if even if uh, we're fr- friends of different enemies, you know, I know he's a private guy. I think Ken Mosca five zero four one. He subscribes to Sit Down Zumok, Lenny's Printer, Carrie Caravas Comedy. Who are these podcasts? Shuli Network, Godfrey. But anybody can subscribe to that. Real, that's the real Phil Elmore. Or Phil Elmore, that guy's not even around. Maybe it is the real uh, Mosca. Anyway, you know, we're not trying to ruin Chad's show or anything. And I hope Mosca keeps a, keeps a tight. Um... <laughs> I assume Mosca was picking him up. Mosca told him to fly into to uh, Atlantic City, told him to take Spirit, told him it's a Spirit hub. You're not going to pick up your boy? Damn, that's an old list. So it might not be the real Mosca. Anyway, I I just assume Mosca will be picking him up. Mosca put this whole thing together. Doesn't Mosca run the Tennessee Beer Hall? Mosca taking a mask off. Come on. I'm pulling my sweatpants up above my calves. I look real gay, like a dainty boy. I look I sh- like I should be selling newspapers on a New York street corner in the 1920s from the knees down. <laughs> what is he talking about? My twin's 25th birthday. I'll be busy. The day of the show, you're not hanging out with Chad and his ilk. You're not hanging out with the German and his milk. <laughs> All right. So Chad's flying 10 55 AM on Saturday. He's landing in Atlantic City at 1.17 p.m. Now, look, I have a, I have a car. I can go pick Chad up if it's going to be too much trouble. Maybe me and uh, Tukey can go pick Chad up. Um, but maybe not. Okay, so Chad gets, into, gets in at 1.17. Let's say around 2, 2.30, he'll be rolling into the Borgata. He's got to wait in the check-in line. He's going to be getting there at prime check-in time, so he's going to have to wait an hour in, in the check-in line. He'll be looking around. Does anybody? Are any of the people I don't want to see here? He'll go to his room. If I know Chad, he'll probably fire up a stream. Uh, I just want to do a show. I just want to do a quick... Uh, Show, we're heading out. Get your tickets. (laughs) Get your last chance. By the way, get your tickets. Speaking of that, did you hear? Did you hear? We got Hackamania. We've got Hackamania. Tickets are on sale now. I couldn't be more happy with uh, how these are selling. I mean, I'm really... um, These went on sale Friday night, and I just... uh, I can't believe... I can't believe 
how well it's doing. I was, I was, you know, going to be worried for the first little while about this, but it's going well, and you should get your tickets. Warning, there are 50 VIP tickets. That is all there is, and that's all there will be. There will be no more VIP tickets released. I, I uh, All you get for the VIP ticket, by the way, is uh, an invite to a pre-show mixer on Friday. It's kind of like a little VIP a little cocktail hour we're going to have before the show, just kind of a thank you where you'll get to hang out with uh, the people in a less crowded environment to hang out. It's more of a just a way to support and give uh, money to the performers. We're going to make whatever you guys, um, whatever we decide to make on this. All the performers on this are, are literally taking um, no guarantee. So I, I, I've, I've offered to fly everybody in. We're putting everybody up. That's all they've been guaranteed. So we don't even know how much money we're going to be making on this gig. I think we will make money, uh, but it's all going to be up to. So we have these VIP level tickets. They're, they're twice the price, but it's for people who want to be involved in that, want to support uh, the effort of the event a little more. And we are going to have some special stuff for the VIPs. We are going to have, again, like not only just like different badges and stuff, but there is a cocktail hour. And then yesterday uh, I decided this. I was talking to somebody here on the team. And we were going to do a barbecue. We are going to do a big barbecue at the house because I'm going to get a big house for all the performers. We're going to do a barbecue there, but I can't invite people over to like an Airbnb house for a big party. They, they frown upon that. And, <laughs> and so I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to, instead of like, I was going to auction off five tickets to the, to the performer barbecue. Again, it would, this would just help offset costs and get some money in for the performers. I think a better way to do it and a more equitable way to do it. Cause I was talking on the discord. And if I do that, it's going to be Tiff and, you know, all the high rollers and stuff are going to jump in and take all the tickets. And I'd like to do it in a more equitable way. And the only way I can think to do that is to make it an event. So I'm looking into, like, getting a space for Sunday that'll have a pool and an outdoor area and we can just do a barbecue. And anybody who wants to come can come. This will be an addition There'll be another cost for this. There'll be another ticket because not everybody's going to want to come Sunday. Uh, on a weekend like that, a lot of people want to fly home Sunday because they have work Monday, especially if you're on the East Coast. You know, you leave here at um, 9 a.m. Vegas time. You're going to land in in New York or on the East Coast. You're probably going to land around 5, 6 p.m., if not later. So your whole Sunday can be eaten up by travel if you got to get home to work. So I don't want to include it in the ticket price. Because not everybody's going to want to come to this. But basically, it's a Friday night uh, stand-up comedy show, professional stand-up comedy show with comics that are attending the conference. After that, we're having an open mic competition where I'd like to give... This is going to be kind of like a, a Kill Tony, low-rent version meets meets um, the gong show, but with interactive online participation as well. So we'll have a panel on stage. We're going to have local comics doing time. I think we're going to have a $500 prize for the local comics. So hopefully we get some really bad comedy coming in um, for your entertainment. That's going to be Friday night. It's kind of stand-up night. Saturday, we're doing podcasts starting in the late afternoon. So we're going to have like Rock Bottom, Ray DeVito, Who Are These Podcasts, Nobody Likes Onions, uh, Tukey Soup, a live stage version of Tukey Soup um, that I know B. Dabbler is going to be working on and uh, more. So that's Saturday. We'll be all podcasting uh, stuff. And then Sunday we'll uh, have a barbecue uh, pool party if people want to come to that. And then go home. Then go home. You know, I'm not responsible for you, for you forever. People are saying it sounds like a horror party. It probably is. Anyway, pick up your tickets. Hackamania.com. Hackamania.com. Tickets are for sale. Details are for sale there. This is the early bird ticketing. Tickets will never be, you have my word, tickets will never be this cheap again. Uh, tickets will never be this cheap again. 
So grab a ticket. Come on out and see us. I know. I know. Everybody's like, this is going to be the worst. Everybody, this is going to be loose. I know. I know. It's so weird how people are like, you guys never leave the house. And it's like, we're all going to leave the house. And you're like, gay. <laughs> um, let the people who don't want to come and think it's gay think it's gay. Let all the people who aren't afraid to leave their house uh, shed their agoraphobia and come on out and have a good time. Look, um, if you're one of the and then we got people who are like, make sure you read the fine terms. There's a lot of stuff that could screw you over. It's like, that's normal rules with any ticket. Do you think my terms are more onerous or or dubious than anything on Ticketmaster's website? Yeah, basically, let me just save you the time. I can cancel the event and keep all your money for any reason at any time, okay? That's almost what it says. So, again, if you don't trust me or what we're doing or trying to do anything, don't come. It's only people who weren't going to come anyway who are saying that. Like, be very careful. <laughs> it's like, okay, then don't. Then don't. Oh, no, you're not coming? <laughs> oh, fuck. We'll probably cancel it. <laughs> uh, you have my word. I'm do I'm trying to do right by people. You know, for any reason, this isn't uh, doesn't happen or anything. I'm trying to spend money as money's needed to be spended. Uh, sp uh, spended. Spent. <laughs> uh, for this event. And um, no, I think it'll be good. I think we're, we're keeping everything pretty low key. And doing only what's necessary. This isn't going to be some big uh, production or event. We're going to have some shows. Most of the effort and the energy into this whole thing will be into uh, making sure the shows go well and don't have any hiccups like Pottstown with the technical stuff. <laughs> I don't. Here's my goals for the show. We're having posters. Just just to be funny, we're selling posters. Like Pottstown. Also, I do think people want, like, people do want something. I don't know why you want Tukey's autograph, but people do. And this way you can pick up your posters at the event. Um, you have to buy a ticket to get a poster. Posters are only going to be available for pickup at the event. So if you bought tickets, you can buy a poster through the website as well. But you have to do it on the same account. You will not, you, it won't even let you buy a poster if you don't have tickets. And then I think we're going to have uh, hats and shirts as well. That'll be available for anybody uh, on the NLO website. Also uh, for pickup at the event. And that's all the merch we're doing. We're not going crazy with merch or anything. Um, we're doing the poster. So my goal for it is to have the posters not be a giant fuck up like Pottstown was. <laughs> Who can't print posters? Who can't print posters? And then um, what's the other thing? Oh, the technical difficult. You know, I wanted to just like go. I just want to have shows. And then we will uh, closer to the event. We will have a streaming uh, pay per view pass as well. If you want to watch all of the Hackamania shows, streaming online, you'll be able to do that. Um, and details on that will be coming later. But think about coming out. We got four months now. Again, Hackamania dot com. Head on over, grab some tickets. I don't want to do, we're not going to do like a big push every day, but this is the first uh, regular show back to promote it. So I'm telling you now, hackamania.com. Uh, grab some tickets. Ray DeVito, uh, Pat Dixon, Tukey, Earl Skakel, who are these podcasts? And of course, uh, nobody likes onions. It's, uh, it's going to be something. Something's going to happen. And I know that I know KB is going to get as we get closer, you know, it's everybody on KB's shit list, me and Carl. And then it's like people he works with now, like Tukey and Ray and Pat. I imagine it's going to get very hostile very quickly. First of all, remember this week is the farthest away from Brennan's pay period. So what the uh, sorcerer told us is, at this juncture, we're, we're peak, angry, uh, agitated Brennan. So we could see a real grumpy Brennan this week, and I expect him to... I expect him to start really laying into Ray and Pat, like, you're going to go to New Mountain? 
Nobody's supposed to go do anybody else's anything. You're supposed to just wait. Every afternoon, you're not you're supposed to just sit and wait and hope that around 4.13, uh, an invitation from our dear leader, Kevin Brennan, rolls into your inbox so that you can come over and watch him be unreasonably upset for two and a half to three and a quarter hours. Ooh. Sorry about that. I got a little carried away. $10, Jason Bentley. I would love to see Borgata Security use Chad's head to open the door to throw him out. See you Saturday. So Bentley's going to be there Saturday. Um, and again, I imagine a, a small contingent of people are going to wander over to Chad's show. If that shows at what? Seven, eight. You know, Chad checks in at one. Chad checks in at 2.30. Grabs himself some Tito's out of a suitcase, has a little nap, gets a shower, slaps himself in the mirror. Come on, Chad, you can do this. Kmart ready. And then he's going to head out to his venue. And then Chad, I don't think he'll be back at the Borgata until like what? 10, 11 o'clock at night. I mean, no one's going to see Chad We're, uh, for, for maybe a few minutes, maybe an hour. Chad ain't going to be around. And this is what Chad's betting on. It's why Chad's not canceling. It's why Chad's not. Chad's not going to be. He's not going to see anybody. And then he's got to be out of his hotel room by 11 a.m. Sunday morning. We're all going to be hung over sleeping. Nobody's going to see Chad. Nobody. The only way you're going to see Chad is if you go to the Tennessee Beer Hall. And then. Watch his show. Fatty Patty. We can be friends. We can have a f f few beers and then go to the room and dip out Kate Meany's soup bowl asshole. Soup bowl. I mean, sharing is caring, Mel Todd. Dad, are you going to take me like a family vacation we never had? I only have a carry on. I can store my huge fake dick in the overhead compartment. She calls her fake dick a carry on? Ugh. Everyone, get your tickets to Hackamania being held at the Grand Hotel. That's the Grand Hotel in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. I wasn't going to bring this up. I wasn't going to yep. bring this up. So, the Grand. Okay, you want to do this, LL Cooley? You want to do this? You want to be the fan of the day that gets yelled at? I mean, look at look at this. I, I Let me just... So you guys know my world, what I what I deal with on a daily. But you want to know? You want the, the fan complaint of the day? Watch what people do. So this is Hackamania.com. Oh, no, that is definitely not. Ooh, if you mistype that, you will get. <laughs> All right, Hackamania.com. Oh, no, we've been hacked. No, okay. So this is hackamania.com. You come here, you scroll down, it's got all the info on your performers. It's got all your info on your tickets. You know, it's very um it's an easy to navigate, small website, it's got the location, address, a map. And then it says recommended nearby hotels. The downtown grand, circa. The D. Three recommended hotels. And then it's got the venue, the location where the shows are going to be, with an address and a map. That's pretty much it. Everything you can want to find for the website. Buy tickets. Buy a poster. You know, just a website. Just a normal website. <laughs> and I get an email... From LL Cool Lee. I wasn't going to do this, but he wants attention. Here we go. Or maybe that was somebody else sending it in to make me go after him. This is a real email I get. So. <sighs> hey, Patrick. Quick question. I mean, just imagine emailing me this. Is this the grand that the event is being held at? I'm trying to use my, first of all, it says, is this the grand that the even is being held at? 
event. I'm trying to use my Hilton points for Hackamania. If not, is there a Hilton-owned hotel close that you recommend? Thanks for the help. Looking forward to see everyone. And then it's a screenshot of the Hilton Grand Vacation Club, Alara Center Strip, Las Vegas. Alara is pretty much next to the Cosmo and the Vidara and all that stuff. Mid-strip. Quick question. Is this the Grand that the event is being held at? Now, let's pretend for a minute that the event was being held at somewhere called the Grand. And then let's pretend that there were a bunch of places in town called the Grand. And then you want clarification. Is this the Grand where you're having the event? It's like, if only there were a place. Where it had like an address so nobody could fuck up. If only there were like something that could pinpoint a location on the planet that could be shared with everyone so that everyone knows where something is. And then if there were a website where you could take that location and say, show me Hilton hotels around this area. Or, and hear me out. You could email Melton, a guy who's got nothing to do. He's not busy, but with anything. Hey, is this where the thing is going to be? I know there's an address on the website. I know there's a pin dropped on a map on a website pointing to an explicit place on on the fucking oblate spheroid we call an earth so that I could go meet anyone there precisely. I know there's that, but is this the Grand Hotel where the event's being held? The event is not being held at a hotel. The website doesn't mention any place called the Grand, and it certainly doesn't mention Hilton. Now, the website is at, or the event is at a place called the Nerd. It is a bar and function center. And then I suggested some nearby hotels. One of those is called the Downtown Grand. So what LL Cooley did is say, Grand, I know that word. Hilton has a grand. Hilton Grand. Is this where the event's going to be? Because I want to use my Hilton points. Now, what I should have said was nothing. What I should have done is delete that email immediately and move on with my life. What I did, because at this point I was very confused, I was like, the event's not at a hotel. Um, I don't know where Hilton's are located. Like, use your map. He's like, yeah, I'm in the Hilton app, and I can't find any of the hotels or the event venue. This is what he writes back to me. I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to get emails. That's not what I said. And, and my whole thing is, like, why are you looking in the Hilton app? So we decide to throw an event, and this guy just pulls out the Hilton app. And he's like, I can't find the nerd where you're having the event in the Hilton app. It's like, try Google. Google has, I know you're worried about missing a Hilton hotel. Believe it or not, Google has those, too. Google has everything. So just search for it there. This mother, I'm not kidding you. This idiot wants to use his Hilton points. So he wants the venue to be a Hilton. And then he's mad that it's not showing up on his map of Hiltons. He's like, none of the hotels you list, the D isn't coming up in the Hilton app. Circa is not coming up in the Hilton app. I can't find the event venue in the Hilton app. It's like, and I go, why are you using the Hilton app? Nothing on my website says go to Hilton, use Hilton, stay at a Hilton. We're having the event at a Hilton. Why are you using the Hilton app? Why, when you're searching for a hotel, did you decide to pull out the Hilton app? Why, when you're looking for the venue for my event, did you pull out the Hilton app? And he goes, I want to use my Hilton points. Oh, well, then that'll make it be at a Hilton then. If you want to use your Hilton points, that'll make the event magically just switch to being at a Hilton. Four four emails this weekend with him. He's still, I, I'm not kidding. 
he still thinks this is me like being a dick. Nothing says Hilton, nothing says the events at a hotel, and nothing says the Grand. And yet he's just yelling at me like, you don't link to the Grand. Which Grand is it? How come there's no Hilton? You're banned. You're banned. You cannot buy a ticket to this event. Do not come. You've already made more admin work for me than I could care to. Everyone who comes to this event is allowed to email me three times for things. This guy's already used like six by wishing it was a, again, he's in the chat trying to justify it. I'm a diamond member. I have a lot of points. What the fuck does that have to do with me and my event? You know, I, I, I'd be like, we're all meeting at Chipotle for the grand opening of the new location. And he's like, I don't see that in the Hilton app. Oh, really? The Chipotle burrito chain's new location isn't coming up in your Hilton app? You'll have trouble trying to get to your plane navigating a terminal if you're using the Hilton app. You'll have trouble placing your order at McDonald's if you're using the Hilton app. You'll have trouble paying your Old Navy credit card if you're using the Hilton app. This guy just wants it to be Hilton, so he keeps emailing me like, how come your event's not coming up in the Hilton app? It's like, I don't, I can't help you. I can't help you. There's nothing on my website that says anything about a Hilton, and I have an address for where it is. Just one email saying, is this where the event is, is insane. I want you to know I'm at a level 19 on that. For you to even send a thing going, is this where the thing is? There's an address. There's an address. It's a universally agreed upon system for numbering and naming places on our planet. You need clarification where it is with an address. By the way, nowhere near it's nowhere near the thing you sent. How many times do I have to do this to get my point? point across? I mean, fuck. So anyway, he is not allowed. LL Cooley. If you buy tickets, they'll be refunded immediately. <laughs> Jason Mentally gifting 10 gifted memberships. Thank God somebody supports me around here, you know? Jesus Christ. Are we still getting chicken cord on, blah? Blah. Even if Kevin doesn't want to come. DK gifting 10 memberships as well. Um, DK also said he can't go now to film Chad. So that's a bummer. Peter Sky Parker, LL still coolly super sticker. I don't care for that. I, I just one of the dumber guys on the planet. You've been given an address and you're like, where is it? At, at, it, it. <laughs> Listen, asthma Satum. You asshat. I'm not telling you where the event is being held. Go ahead and sleep in your van, you poor. Hi, Jared, you poor e Hank ain't yank. I don't like my voice anymore. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. I wish we could still go to our church. Remember when she said that? I wish we could still go to our church. <laughs> but I got swinger tattoos all over me and my husband can't stop dropping in bombs rumble fridays jesus we are dropping faster than Mubi in a pretend boxing match i'll be letting crutches digest the tuna in my tunnel by next month to make oh, our God. nut if these numbers continue chandler if we make another hand job video to beg you for money can you save us i, I wonder uh, if my forklift position is still available we do have to spend a little time on steel toe today hey i know people don't want to maybe you should try marriott bonvoy app you fucking idiot or maybe you should stay at the lovely Strat. Turkey only stays at high, uh, Hyatt Properties. I'm a United snob. I'm a United snob. I'm a United snob. Uh, this is this morning how the show started. I wish I was kidding. This is the very beginning of the show. This is how it starts. No theme song or anything. 
Watch. Oh, big intro, nothing like that. We're back. Sorry. We weren't late today. We've been doing a show for the last five minutes. But uh, the problem is, if you're on the if you're on the Rumble end, this is normal. You've been we've been going for five minutes, whatever. Um, Rumble rules. YouTube hasn't got it figured out yet, right, Moody? Right, Moody. I gotta get a new nickname for Moody. Moody and Moody are too close for me. This early in the morning. Morning. If you're on the YouTube end of things, over on Restream, I forgot to put you in the thing, and. So it didn't go, and now here we are. oops -a doodles Sorry, guys. At least when he fucks up, he explains it really well. If you're on Rumble, then the thing has been normal. But if you're watching on YouTube, then we didn't, when we woke up, forgot to put the thing into the restream, into the key, and therefore you get what we got. So it's like, well, good thing you explained it. I mean, fuck. Sorry, boys and girls. Hulk Amasha Baby says you're so good at this tech thing. Yeah, I was starting to get nervous when there was like nothing <sighs> happening in the, the chat. The chat was doing nothing. Is the chat room broken? No, there's just no discussion going on. There's just no discussion going on. Uh, look, there'll be more details coming out. I, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. Um, if you have little questions, like things like, you know, what are the drink specials? Uh, will we need sunscreen? It's like for, it's Vegas in the summer. You will need sunscreen. The drink specials will be announced. We're gonna have some uh, some uh, liquor partners for the event, and those will just be available at the bar. And again, we've we've uh, gotten rid of all the fucking mess tied to us. You're better off getting a hotel. I'm not kidding. You're better off getting a hotel, pulling up Expedia.com, or your Bonvoy or uh, Hilton apps. I don't know of a Hilton property downtown, but Hilton owns a lot of stuff that's not like labeled under the Hilton brand. So I'm not sure. But again, believe it or not, Google has all this stuff uh, handled. Uh, but all the details like that, again, uh, the tickets for the uh, barbecue and stuff will be on sale at a later date um, if you want to come on Sunday. So if you want to stick around on Sunday, and uh, come to the barbecue. So I'm committing to this. This is going to be a hell of a lot of work for me this week. I'm going to barbecue for the uh, event because I want people coming out. They're going like, we want some of that melting barbecue. So the week before, I'm going to I'm gonna do like, you know, some briskets and some uh, pork so that people can have melting made, homemade, classic barbecue. And... Um, and then I'll shit into a hotel pan, and that'll be your sides. <laughs> Peter Sky Parker, uh, Patrick Hilton. I wish. I wish. Colin Madden, I only caught some of that. <clears throat> Did you hear that? I only caught some of the tirade. So you're saying uh, this dong fest is at the Hilton now? I don't see it in the app. Can I use Dave and Buster? But you can use Bubble Box. Dave and Buster Box. The Bubble Box. The Bubble Box. Rockin' to the beat. Um, but yeah, you're dead on with everything, I think. Patty, can you and Zumok run a Norfolk Southern style train on my stinky, greasy snatch sandwich? Maybe if Chandler throws an extra 50, Chadley can let me peg his poop shoot. Snatch sandwich. <laughs> Oh, yeah, DK's got to go on the list now, right? DK wasn't on our... I think he should have been, actually. That was a mistake. He's going to be mad about that. He'll email me. DK emails me after every show. He's like, you know, I give memberships. I give money. I'm on your side. I simp for you. And you never, never show me any sort of... Notice me, senpai. Notice me. Every day, DK's like, when will you... See me for what I really am. <laughs> what Chad said, I want to give back. Let's do something that gives back. I never said I wanted to give back. <laughs> I never said I wanted. And then Vaping Dago definitely should have been on that list. Was he on there? I'm really slacking. Vaping. Jesus. Christ. These are like. 
I have a lot of information that would suggest that DK and Vaping Dago are the same guy. Look at DK. He's like, huh? <laughs> I'm fucking way. Calm down. See, maybe I should fuck with DK more. If he's this unplugged. <laughs> I'm sitting here making all these jokes about April's age. And Patty's it. very aloof. I'm so out. I I've had a. I've had a weekend, man. I've had a weekend. It's just a lot of stuff. It's the culmination of a lot of things. Uh, the the um, logistics and stuff for Hackamania are going to be crazy. They're going to be crazy. We're going to try to do a really good job for everybody that comes out. We want to have a really good show. And part of that is balancing, like, planning things versus not planning things. I The only things I'm planning... Is I, I you know I'm gonna have some people for checking in for giving out the badges and posters and um helping set up and stuff before the events but that's all I want I want it to be about the shows I want it to be about um people hanging out so the le I think the less infrastructure and shit around it the better we're just a very simple check in everybody have a good time um. Yeah, no need to complicate it with tons of uh, activities and puzzles. and People people have been checking out the website for the nerd. It's the venue. Believe it, this is not... If you've been to Skankfest before, you probably know where the nerd is. The nerd is literally in the same complex, Neonopolis, as... Um, uh, it's one, one story below where they have all the Skankfest shit. And so don't get it confused. This is not, this is not going to be like... Skank Fest is going to be 100, 150 losers uh, wandering around. And I'm confident we're going to have that uh, now. The ticket sales have been great. Um, uh, or just in one day, the ticket sales were enough to make me go like, oh, okay, people are, are going to come to this. I don't have to worry about it. So, um, And Carl hasn't even put them on sale for who are these podcasts yet. I, I would expect him. I would expect Carl would be able to sell more. Tickets then nobody likes onions or Tukey. Uh just based on you know his reach, but we'll see. We'll see. Either way, it's gonna be a fun time, and uh I hope you're thinking about coming if you haven't committed yet. Uh I'll try not to just talk your ear off about the hackamania event. What up, you pale ass cracker, Ofe motherfuckers. Don't be asking Melton for no info about nothing. He will whoop your raggedy ass into submission. By the way, Melton, you should kiss Chad on the lips in a seat. I'd be laughing my ass off. Oh, yes. I'm not saying you can't ask me anything. I'm saying going back and forth, like, is this the Hilton that it's at? It's like, it's not at a Hilton. It's not at a Hilton. So, like, is this the Hilton that it's at is a crazy question to ask. Not once on the website does it men mention a Hilton anywhere. And this guy's just, I can't find it in the Hilton app, Patrick. Is this the right Hilton? Where's the, where, is the event at the right Hilton? It's nowhere in my Hilton app. I mean, I never want to hear Hilton again. Hilton Hotels, Jesus, why don't you just announce you have Newports and Swisher Suites littering your hovel? Even my cousin Shaniqua won't lay those nappy dreads on a Hilton pillow. Her and Ray Ray either go to Red Roof or the Ritz, but Hilton is for pores like that tarred scrimp or the anal pin cushion waitress. Uh, Vaping Dago gifting 20 memberships. Uh, thank you so much. Is Vaping Dago coming out to Hackamania? We'll see. Waver is here and Pulper is here. And I imagine that means B Smiley is brushing his teeth as we speak. T.O. Hank, you think Butch will let me crash at his place? What if we can get Butch? What if we can get Butch to come perform? Hmm. Everything else. And nobody's reacting. Yeah, the chat's doing nothing. Like, uh oh, what happened? Oh, there's then, just no uh, conversation. Somebody said, uh, Amanda Hug and Kiss wrote, Well, we're waiting. Yeah. And that made me go, Oh, immediately it clicked. It went, I didn't update the YouTube tab. So as soon as someone in the chat said, There's no show on, it immediately clicked. And I was like, Oh, there's no show on. I'll go do it. Right. I'm on restream. Oops. Look at Johnny's body language for these shows. This is this is the beginning of the show. 
At the beginning of the show, he's already leaned in, checked out. I set up the stream. I had it ready to go. Forgot that you turned that one off. Son of a... No, I didn't turn it off. I didn't put the right stream. Oh. I didn't go to the drop-down menu and put the... Imagine explaining this to your audience in the first two minutes of your show. No, I just didn't pull the drop down to the right stream that we were doing uh, in there. <laughs> Shit. Well, uh, it started the members only stream rather than the Monday stream, dumbass. Yes. Yes, it did. And yes, I am a dumbass. Thank you. Uh, Michael B says, here's another week of constant yawning. Fuck you. Uh, eating on air. Fuck you. <laughs> Why has he started doing that? The eating on air. There is, there really is no bigger fuck you to your audience than just snacking down on air. When you're the primary speaker, you know, I never got this on O and A when like they would sit there and eat yogurt and fruit and shit into the microphone. It's like, you guys take 10 minute breaks. You can't eat a bowl of granola in 10 minutes. You can't eat a banana in 10 minutes. Why do you need to eat on air? And then like movie, it's like I, I have a, I had a granola bar before the show. That's all I need before the show. I had granola bar before the show. It's over. Now we're done. I'll eat when the show's over. I'll go have breakfast or lunch or whatever I want at 1030. You can't just not eat. I mean, I'm fat. My body needs it. It craves it. We all know this. If I don't eat every two minutes, I die. Right? All the fat jokes you're thinking of that are dumb and lazy as fuck. <laughs> oh, God. What's in my eye? I don't, I, I just don't know why I have to crunch down. And again, the yawning. We saw it last week when April would cancel and not come on. The yawning, the feet up in the chair, sitting Indian style, just reading the chat. This guy who used to have a pro show and do prep and all this stuff, it really has just turned into him reading the chat and being angry playing clips not even putting them up so we can see fuck you is it even better when they are it is even better when they are subtitled fuck you oh <laughs> and a core full of doorknobs okay that one's right but to the other ones go fuck yourself <laughs> uh hobo says and then johnny has to go <laughs> as if that's a good one nothing entertaining happened <laughs> this morning, welcome back, Johnny. It's been rough without you. Wow. Really? Apparently, realize... we've been putting on some real dog shit programs. That... Oh, you know what they're talking about? Last Monday when you weren't here. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that that my day off meant you were going solo. I would have that wow. I would have soldiered on. What do you do? Uh Redbird says, nobody make fun of Aaron. Thank you very much, Redbird. That's incredibly sweet. And in no way is he intending for that to backfire. So that people do, in fact, make fun of me, and then I get more insults. I think he's being genuine. Uh, Ro uh, Ray DeVito fan says, whoa, look at that spider. Time for a Floby cut. I know, it's haircut day today. It's haircut day today. I will get my haircut today. And I thought today was the gym day. I mean, what are you cutting? What are you cutting? Oh, no. Are, is this gel? Does he do like each one of these little branches? <laughs> like, what's the goal? I want to know like optimally what he thinks like, what is he going for? That's what I want to know. What's the look you're aiming for? Like if all, if everything was clicking and w looking how you're supposed to, how would it look? Like, what's perfect for your hair? Let me know. <laughs> like, this can't be it. This can't be what you were going for. I can do both. Uh, you're going to cut your hair while you're at the... You might be like, Patrick, you wear a hat so nobody can make fun of your hair. It's like, yeah, I don't want to, like, wake up and go in the bathroom and organize every fucking branch of a spider on my head. Again, I have plenty of hair, but I don't want to... Just who who has the time? No, 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 no. I will do them separate. It's two and one. It's yeah, no. I can do both. I promise. 
Uh, Fuck you, dude, says, such a professional put-together show. No wonder you're still on radio. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Faceless Gamer says, I need some moral support today, but the M is silent. Do you get that? Yep. He needs. Do you get it? Do you get it? He needs oral support. Ah. Oh. He needs someone. If you don't get the brilliance of the joke, the faceless gamer needs somebody to suck on his penis. But he wanted to put it in a way where he didn't outwardly. So this is a new thing Aaron's doing now to kill time. Aaron is like, this is a comedic thing I use all the time. It's fine to throw it out once a show or something. Aaron's doing it for every fucking thing now. So the comment before this was, uh, okay, nobody make fun of Aaron. Oh, do you see what he's doing? He definitely didn't mean that sarcastically. I think he definitely doesn't intend for people to read his comment where it says, don't make fun of Aaron. And then to make fun of Aaron so that more people pile on me and make fun. It's a way for him to turn a comment that would would have taken a second to read and just stretch it into this three minutes of material to kill some time. Oh, he definitely doesn't mean it sarcastically. And now here's another one. And now here's another one. Uh, Moral support with a silent M. Do you get it? Do you get it? What he's doing is he's saying he would like someone to suck on his penis but he's phrasing it in such a way that's more palatable to a general audience. So he is saying moral support and implying oral by saying the M is silent, thereby indicating he would like us to service his peen. I mean, this is just what it like. This is no different than Chad reading the comments. This is just more talented. Chad reads the comments, and his comments are way less interesting, and Chad has nothing to do with them. Chad will go like, Bill from New Jersey says, hi, we're doing it. Let me put that up. Okay. Black Cat Jessica, hi. Are you going to be at the... Yeah, I'm going to be at the Borgata. Yeah, you're gone. You're gone, pal. You guys are fucking hey that's Chad. That's Chad. He's like reading and doing his own fucking thing in the middle of a show. At least at least Mooby can vamp, but it's so transparent what he's doing here. This is just he has nothing and he's filling time by stretching nothings into somethings. And it should be called out. At least say that he needs someone to suck on his penis. Oral support. Every time I bomb today, I'm going to stop the show. I'm going to look at you, and I'm going to say oral support. Okay. Oral support. This is five minutes into his show. This is five minutes into his show. This is the energy level. Uh, Corn Diff says, don't worry, Aaron, I'm here. Oh, well, thank Christ. All, we've all been delivered. Uh, Los Federales says, Aaron, is the Mall of America worth it? How many times a year do you go there? Uh, once, maybe. It's fun. I mean, you'll love it. It's it's fun. You'll love it. <laughs> it's great. It's just that when you live here, it's not a huge yeah. deal. It's you know? it's kind of like people who are who are like, oh man, you live close to Disney World. I bet you go there all the time. No, not really. Yeah, right. Uh, first of all, I can't spend two grand a week. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you're not paying for like the room and everything else, just like the pass or whatever, that's like what? A, just I assume a couple hundred bucks. All right. Where we have to get to is I got to do the math because it's. Yeah, I'm going to guess two hours and 30 minutes back, 40 minutes back. Fuck. I got to do like. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's got to be two hours. I'm trying to do. It's tough. It's tough to, like, do math. Again, I didn't actually go out of my way to get them. They made their way to me. No. Uh, Cocktiff says, how are those Pakistani gender studies? Hotel stays. And will replace the current food service. Hold on. Deep gifting a membership to Gregarious. Nice to see Gregarious is going to have green. There's a point here where they beg for Chandler. uh, Low key that I'm trying to get to. Spelling going. They'll tell them that. The other party wants to kick him out, and we. I know. I had, I had a whole vitamin water on your water bottle there. Look at Aaron has the same cup as me now. Not that it's an unpopular cup, but this did not happen a while ago. So I don't want to hear about who wants to wear whose skin anymore. Mm-hmm. Do some things off mic that would sound disgusting. Put up a little bit, and I don't want to be a haza. If you will, who decided she you know why it's any of our business in just a little bit. It's of America. Aaron Imholt is your friend and has a spare bedroom for you. Now, I, I, I neither of these eagles. And what was the other one? I'm your friend. Well, I don't want to tell Bill over your skis there, my friend. Over your skis. Whoa, look at this freeze frame. Sorry, every once in a while we get a freeze frame that should be examined oh no what is going on here what the fuck i don't even have anything to say about it it just happened to freeze on this frame and that's crazy whoa whoa i think never met you're getting a little over your skis there, my friend. <laughs> oh, no. Those eyes are going to pop right out of his little Kleinfelter skull. Uh, oh, boy, we're getting a call. Oh, no. Why is that on this? Hello? Hello? Hey, Mr. Onion, my name is Charlie. How are you? Hi. I'm sorry? Hi. I apologize. There's a little breakdown where I'm li- living right now. Do you know who I am? Do I know who Charlie is? No. Yeah. No, I'm someone that used to call into the Gino Visconti show, and he doxed me recently. And I met him on a rampage to destroy this fucker's life. Okay. So you have no clue who I am, correct? No. So anyway, listen, I called him. To, can I ask you, listen, I, I, I noticed you a few days back. I don't know your full history. Are you a friend of Gino Visconti? No. Hey, get your thoughts organized and call back. I mean, imagine me take, first of all, I don't know why this is getting routed through the wrong audio today. Anyway, uh, imagine that call to me. What in the fuck? Charlie wants to clear some things up. Real quick, are you a friend of Gino's? Well, he doxxed me the other day. You don't know who I am? I'm Charlie. You sure you don't know? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'd rather hear LL Cooley pontificate about Hilton's all day. You want to organize your thoughts and call back in. <laughs> uh, thank you for the five bucks. 275 away from today's goal. Thank you guys very much for keeping that thing dropping gradually. We do appreciate it. I really want to do this, uh, this, I was going to say sex teacher story, but it's not even a teacher. Uh, I feel like I might've gone past it. There's a moment. The problem is whenever it's still live, it doesn't give you a timestamp. It gives you a minus like to go back. Like you can watch live or you can go back one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And then it's, like impossible to find anything. You know, I guess I don't think about like party lines or anything. I just criticize the person who's there fucking up. So I guess I, guess I don't put myself in that. But it was like 40 minutes into He's his powerless. show. powerless. Yeah. He can't do a thing. Uh, Hulk, yeah, Hulkamash says, I have a tax form. I have to file from the walls. Because yeah, them in one army. So I've got the National Guard. Oh, and by the way, I also have public opinion, so 
physical food stamps were like with a picture of meat on it and be like, you can only get food with this. No, just a debit card with some cash on it. None of this is going to cause like MS-13 or any kind of... Trying to become American. Where is it? God, the problem is I can't bookmark it or anything while it's still live. So I got to find it. Those Pakistani gender studies going colors for... Gen they're really concerned. On Rumble says a little behind the Supreme Court said the Ooh. state guys putting it up and then five feet down the road. Could buddy 280. Oh, wait, look at that. Already at 280 today. Get the hell out of here. All they do is update you on how much money they've made. You won't believe how much money we've made today, everybody. Get it under 200. This is great. Thank you, uh, men and women, boys and girls, people of Steel Toe. It's, go it's going great so far. Uh, so, yes, $53 million in debit cards from Mayor Adams in New York City to the migrants. Let's have the conversation about getting rid of them. Let's not even have the discussion. What we need to discuss is not where to house them. Giving them money. Worker. Print debit cards and not any money will just use it to this legislation. <laughs> yeah. It might have been bad. By the new Roosevelt Hotel. It'll start with a group of five us offered there. He just reads about conservative it. news articles he, he got served last any night. any income is coming in. Provided with nearly. So you come here illegally, you hang. You're, you're coming here illegally. Uh, all morning so far. Illegal, They've illegal. They programmed you. Uh, by the way, I always skip to Peter Sky Parker in the chat. He says, still talking about me in chat. I left this conversation two hours ago. That's weird. We haven't been going that long. That got me excited. It made me think it was closer to the end of the show than it was. We're only 45 minutes in, you son of a bitch. That got me excited. It made me think that we were closer to the end of the show than it was. Um, oh, hold on. Everybody's saying this, this was last week. No, this is this morning. You know you haven't left. You had me thinking we, we were all of a time to be an illegal dude. You have to do more than just exist. After that, you know, beating up a cop doesn't. There's steps you have to follow. Legal would. I don't blame the illegals for shit. I don't. I, it's not a good. In general, if I were an illegal, your Sky Parker is an illegal immigrant. Some confirm that one way or the other. Uh, so, yes, $53 million. Really easy to buy. Immigrant, you listen to this. Just stick around a while. Uh, the Steel Toe Show. That would be great. Uh, Kalama says, "Don't stop lying." I, I'm so sorry, everybody, but it's so good. It's so good. Hey, Johnny, you pre-ordered your new, your new spring era training fitted when you're caught. Your new era. All right. I'm terrible at my job. Uh, Balls deep, gifting a membership. Uh, the real John Doe says, "Well, when the goal is to collapse society, say it again." He is what I want to know. Or not vote at all. Because they'll talk. He wants to kick him out. And Entirely wrong. Right. I mean, they, they. this might be really early. This might be the earliest I've ever done it, but I have to break, break the seal today. Oh, Jesus, man. I, and now I've been uh, I have to break the seal, lest that would sound loose in my... Uh, if, I got to find uh, the Chandler uh, bit. Molt is your friend. Aaron's period. Your friend while getting a little over your... From today's goal. Thank you guys very much for keeping that thing dropping gradually we do appreciate it i really want to do this uh this i was going to say sex teacher story but it's not even a teacher and this one literally you can't no you used to be a hockey player you know you I, see if i can do anything Go run off to the bathroom movie aaron had to leave Bath. yeah shut up what do you mean shut oh. we gotta find where he he basically tells Chandler, like, we're waiting for Chandler to donate. We have three new sound effects to play for when Chandler donates. So if Chandler will just give, he could see what the new sound effects are. And then there's more to it. But I got, you know, the problem is you cannot bookmark these shows. Well, every once in a while. Somebody says negative 220 for Chandler talk. Yeah, right now? Okay, hold on. Hold on. I hope you're, are you right? Is hot cocoa. All right. Yep. Oh, this is this is around where it is. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck. Coconut peach, right? All right. Yes. All right. That's serial killer. 
That's going to save me so much fucking time. Wow, we got a lot of these uh, super chats. Sorry. Mycroft, uh, member for seven months. Looks like Mubi modeled his hair after the art contest Spider. Yeah, congrats to uh, Anastasia knocking that out of the park. That design Friday for the tattoo art contest was fucking great. Uh, knocked it out of the park. Just fantastic. DK, Chad gets lightheaded if food doesn't pass his lips by 6 p.m. Can we schedule a Zoom meeting uh, to plan a meeting to discuss mine, Flat Cat Jessica's, as well as others more deserving members' rightful place on your new fancy AI wall? Maybe we should. Maybe we'll stick digital signs up on the wall behind me, like Obnoxious John used to have in his background. Shout out to Obnoxious John. Uh, single mother of five. I'd say it's a bigger F you to be late than eating on air. Oh, well, everybody's got their lines, don't they? Luckily, that's what makes the world go around. B. Smiley the third, 99 cents, along with Waver and Pulper. I think there's some sort of triumvirate working on my demise. Serial killer giving me the accurate timestamp. Thank you very much. LL Cooley, guess who just bought a VIP ticket? See you at the Grand, baby. We will not be at the Grand. There's nothing at the Grand. There's there's no Grand. There's no Hill. There's no Hill. Do not listen to LL Cooley. That's not a real thing. Flimsy Greenberg, 10 gifted memberships. And that means Flimsy's going to go on the, uh, the honor roll. Flimsy green bomb. Okay. Pen stopped working, but if there's another flimsy GR, then we're in trouble. We're in real trouble. There should we should start making different flimsy um accounts just to get it popping and confused. Hit the like button. We're doing really, really bad for 7 30 a.m. to only have 118 likes. We're Big Pants family. Balls deep. Read soap dot shop. Promo code geek. Hold on. He's reading out promos for these. He's got a new sponsor. It's his candle company that makes hot chocolate candles. Is this a real sponsor? Your voice is not ready for that. It's not. It's not in a good place. All right. I'm going to get matches. And then we're going to light some, uh, we're going to light some uh, Reed Street candles. Yeah. Uh, Reed Street Soap, Reed Street Soap says, hey, we have manly candles too. I, if your podcast has tow trucks and bars five miles from your house as a sponsor, you're in trouble. When you lose those sponsorships... And replace it with a small timey soap and candle company. And then one of your two male co hosts has to get up in the middle of the show to go get canned, or sorry, matches to like can. First of all, matches? Are we in Little House on the Prairie? Mouses. Wait, what did I say? I'm out. I'm really, I said mouses. I'm so scattered today that it might just be time for me to pack up and quit this whole podcasting thing. We've had a good go, and maybe I'll just hand uh, Hackamania off to DK to run while I'm not here. So just to clarify, what's going on at the Hilton again? Ah! Yeah, I just said mouse is out of nowhere. I don't know, hack hack a verse anonymous mouse. I'm losing it. I'm not well. I'm not well. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so fucking tired. Ugh, God. God bless you for putting up with this. Yeah, but I'm going to light some fucking lady ones. Yeah, these are... Uh these are manly sense. Here's like, what I want you to decide. I mean, is, th is this what they're spending their time on? Reed Street Candles sent April some hot chocolate candles. And this is what they plug on their show now. They're not worried about money. And I was thinking about this. Somebody pointed out. They used to have enough Twitch subscribers where they would get 15 grand a month in Twitch subscribers only. That's take home pay for Aaron M. Holt alone. This is before April quit her job. 
15,000 a month just from Twitch subs. That's what they used to make. Cut to Aaron saying, I hope we can get back to 600 subs. If he had 600 subs, um, let's say they're $10. That's 6,000, right? That's $6,000. You take YouTube's cut out of that. Um, okay, four grand, conservatively, four grand. They're hemorrhaging cash. There's no way these two got accustomed to 20 grand a month, 25 grand a month total. Now they're sitting here breaking in anywhere from like five to seven a month. You know, I guess if you want to be really generous, let's say seven to 10 a month, but then she quit her job. So there's no income there. I mean, it's a dramatic decrease. It's a dramatic decrease. Kina K says, I told you six months ago, Steel Toe needed to go back to Twitch and rolls her eyes. Why are you saying that to me? Like you got me or you told me, or I told you so. I'm not a producer for Steel Toe. I can't send them back. You're like, I told you they needed to go back. Oh God, thank God Kina K told me. I can't believe I didn't put him back on Twitch. You're rolling your eyes at me like you're some smart bitch and I'm out of it? Fuck you, Kina K. I told you they needed to go back. You never listen to me. You're right. I am in charge of Steel Toe. I should have put him back. What are you talking about? You told me? You didn't tell me shit. You might have typed it in a chat room passive aggressively. You told me? Is that going to be in my emails? Is that going to be in my messages? From Kina K. Steel Toe needs to go back to Twitch. Don't make me bring this up again in six months when I'm right. I, I want everyone to die. <laughs> You're Keanu Caster. No, but look at the flip. There's sense too. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, rustic rose. Ooh, mm -hmm. coconut peach. Right. I mean, have this hair and talk about candles. Okay, that's my request. Have this hair, this face, and talk about candles with your arms crossed. Be more gay and talk more about candles for me. Balls deep. Read soap dot shop. Promo code Kiki Bucks. Read soap dot shop. Is this anything like steel toe dot crescent mt coffee dot org? Whatever happened to that? You never hear them plugging coffee anymore. It's almost like they made no money from it and it was a waste of your time. It's almost like it's unethically sourced trash beans in a bag sent through three different distributors and resellers before it gets to you at six times the markup of what it costs. Crescent Mountain. What happened to it? What happened to it? What happened to Cameo? Same mentality as Chad. Just keep starting up new projects you can't control or handle. Yeah, we have time. Why not sell coffee? Yeah, we're going to launch uh, Cameo. Is all this doing a lot? Remember Chad had Cameo and nobody wanted one of those? So Chad launched iReply. How many people do you think have done that? That was the big selling point. Guys, you can ask me anything. It just costs $20. Go over to iReply, submit your question, and I'll answer your question for $20. I'm Chad Zumok. It's like, or... You're an emotionally reactive bitch, and we can just ask you any question on Twitter, and you'll have a meltdown for free. For free. <laughs> I reply. Do you? Do you, Chad? For 15% off. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to be decide between that cup candle. All right, what's the cup one? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it says on there. Maybe no, read. it's on the bottom. Oh, what is it? No, it's just a warning label. Maybe yeah. read Street Soap will tell us in the chat. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm you got the cup. I'm telling you right we're doing now. What's more pathetic? I, I'm serious. Like, if you want to know who your favorite creator that's a complete loser is, watch them continually partner up with these small businesses that do nothing. Hot sauce. Hot chocolate candles. Uh, small batch coffee. They're, they're selling four bags, six bags in, 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 in a six-month period. I'd be willing to bet money 
that Steel Toe has never sold 100 bags of coffee accumulated since they started. I'd be willing to bet any amount of dollars that Steel Toe Coffee didn't sell 100 bags in the entire run. I'd be willing to bet. And I know this is going to sound unpopular, too. I'd be willing to bet that there weren't 100 bottles of uh, Silk City Hot Sauce Mud Shark Mania sold. I'd be willing to bet. You cannot count the two the two uh, cases you sent to Chad for free in lieu of payment as sold bottles. I want you to really think about this. Chad Sumak has 78 paid Patreon members. 78 people who have raised their hand and said, I'll support the mud shark. You think more than that about hot sauce? You're out of your mind. I'm willing to bet. I'm throwing it out to hot sauce daddy himself. I don't think 100 people ordered Mud Shark Mania. I'm going to make that claim. I'm sure we'll do some friendly bet he might want to do or something. Look, uh, $800 he claims saved his company. So is $100 a good bet? I don't know. Is 100 a good amount? I'll bet Silk City Hot Sauce, 100 people didn't buy Chad Zumok's hot sauce. Is that a clear enough bet? I'll bet a hundred individuals. I'll bet less than a hundred individuals bought Silk City hot sauce, Mud Shark Mania. Throwing that out there. I just like I'm not retarded. I I, I know how it works. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. I'm not saying you didn't sell 108 bottles. Maybe you did, but it was from six people. Chandler bought 30. Chad bought 40. There ain't, Flimsy's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. Silk City ain't got 100 customers. Silk City don't have 100 customers. I'm willing to bet on it. Doing the cup? These are, these are loser companies that pick losers to sell their products. You think this candle company rules? You think Crescent Mountain Coffee is doing well? They're not. They're not. Their instincts for business are fucked up. They spin their wheels and spend their time on things that don't make money and they don't make dollars and they don't make sense. So, yeah, I mean, you can almost do this across the board. There's no way anything teamed up with Chad Zumok or Gino or Ray is, like, crushing it. That goes along. That goes with Hackamania. Oh, Hackamania sold hundreds of tickets. We're sure. We're sure. <laughs> yep, we're going. With we're doing cup. it. There's cinnamon or we're something. We're doing in the cup. it. I'm shouting now, and uh, I'll be tempted not to drink it once it's liquefied. Yeah, just start drinking wax like a bunch. Uh, David Chandler says no one wants that. Aaron, I know. I know, Dave. Watch this. Watch this. I know. Hey, David Chandler. Woo! Woo! Notice me, notice me, Chandler. Notice me. Now, David Chandler. Somebody told me this uh, Friday night. I hadn't heard this, but it would make sense. It would seem to check out. Somebody said David Chandler made a New Year's resolution that he's going to give to different shows this year or something like that. Great, fine. I hadn't even noticed this. It's February. I I would suppose that shows like KB and um, Steel Toe have noticed. Chad probably hasn't been doing a lot of shows because he has noticed. I didn't. I didn't see this proclamation from Chandler, uh, nor did I hear about it until like Friday. But if that's true, it's gonna have some people scrambling. It's going to have some people channeling, scrambling. So Chandler pipes up in the chat. The movie goes, oh, hey, by the way, Chandler. Watch this. One wants that, Aaron. I know. I know, Dave. I know. Hey, David Chandler, by the way, the internet thinks that I produced the, like, the, like fucking desperate for money, steel toe. Why would you bring this up if it's not? <laughs> by the way, David Chandler, every, everyone thinks we're desperate for money over here, steel toe. And then watch what he does to prove he's not desperate for money. 
Aaron brought this up to prove he doesn't need Chandler and he's not desperate. Watch. Produced his own David Chandler drop and made this. It's How dare those pieces of shit on the internet say that I produced that as if I have that kind of skill. I stole that. Yeah. David Chandler, somebody showed me that and I stole it and made it for when David Chandler donates to the Ooh. Here we go. Program. Thank you very much. All right. Matches. Uh, Reed Street Soap says the mug is hot cocoa. All right. Yep. That's definitely a hot cocoa Ooh. smell. Michael B says, who are these podcasts? Has a drop for him also. See? We have two drops for him. We have that one. Yeah. And then we have the one that I have to get back on my board. And then we have, I got two drops. One for the Dave and one for the Chandler. I got two drops. One for the money and one for my handler. I got two drops. This is all while he's searching for a drop, by the way. He's not vamping. He's not riffing. He's hunting for a drop he wants to play. This happens all the time. He takes forever to find drops. Drops, one for the money and one for my handler. I got two drops. All right, here we go. You'd all be dead now if it wasn't my David. See, I have two David Chandler drops. So whenever he gives us money, he can decide. He can pick which one of his drops he wants. There you go. It's his call. That was followed by zero dollars from David Chandler. <laughs> I mean, hey, by the way, David Chandler, we have a bunch of drops we can play if you give money. But also, I'm autistic, and I've mentioned the drops, so I'm going to play them now anyway, regardless. I mean, this is getting... David Chandler gives over here, and we yell at him and tell him he's a fucking moron. Save your money. Your wife's going to kill you. I mean, Aaron's over there like, please, please. Please. Uh, Sp Peter Sky Parker says the song was made for the other David Chandler, the famous 9-11 truther. Right, exactly. David, J Our David Chandler has no idea what Operation Northwoods is. The other David Chandler can quote it to you chapter and verse. Uh, that is Frank Tedesco. Check him out. A great improvisational musician. Yeah, see, I stole that from, <laughs> I stole this shirt from Frank. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm getting matches and we're lighting the candle i'm waking up we're gonna I have a great show forgot that you hadn't left to do all right guys we are gonna light the candles i know we've been teasing it a long time but it's the lighting of the candles do that yeah we got a hockey mom i know i'm impatient the okay, hockey mom's uh, gonna gang back. To everyone going why aren't you making fun of david why aren't you making fun of carl for having that drop i don't watch carl's show i don't know how to make it more clear to you <laughs> I don't watch who are these podcasts. I, th there's 9,000 podcasts I'm not making fun of. I don't know about them. Does does Carl play that? I wouldn't know. I don't watch who are these podcasts. Next question, press con I mean, have a meltdown about it more. Have a meltdown about it more. Carl's not a reactive fucking nut until this past week about his father with the cancer and stuff. How come you're not making fun of something you're not completely aware of, huh? <laughs> I mean, let it go. Let it go. How could I make fun of something I'm not aware of? I had no clue that clip comes from Carl. How come you're not making fun of Carl for that? Because we don't. Because we don't. Because I do whatever I want over here, and you come for it. Eat out of my hand, baby bird. <laughs> and a bunch of 15-year-olds, not on the show, uh, but we're going to talk about that. She's a Minnesotan, too. What a good egg. Uh, and then we're going to light this lovely hot chocolate candle. and have I love how the candle's like a tease for, like, coming up. You know, for, like, coming up in the thing. Okay, so now this guy's having a meltdown. Like, he just said Carl does it. He just said Carl does it. I don't know. I haven't seen that. How can I make fun of a thing I don't have or have seen? No, but he said. Uh, okay. I don't have a clip of that. I don't have. Well, you should pull it up. He mentioned it, so you should go hunt around for a clip of Carl playing that song. 
I, I need everyone to take their prep. When you, if you literally think to yourself, how come you're not making fun of a thing you don't know about? <laughs> Have a nice, dainty, sweet little Monday. Speaking of good eggs, what are the odds that one of those pucks crossed the line? Oh, no. And she's got to figure out whose it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, good luck. All right. So they're going to talk about a teacher fucking. I don't really have uh, anything else. I just want to play that little Chandler bit. Inspector. That's what I caught this morning as I was <laughs> listening to, to uh, Steel Toe. Anyway, fantastic stuff. Okay, again, there's a million shows I don't make fun of. If I don't have a clip or I haven't seen it, how can I make fun of it? Your little tiny nuanced brain is like, uh, how come you don't make fun of the thing that I saw? You're like, Ke I mean, you might as well be Kevin. Kevin saw a video one night at like 10 p.m. And the next day at noon, he's screaming, how come this hasn't, how come nobody's done a uh, hundred hours about this? And they're like, well, it was posted eight hours ago. Yeah, but still. How has this not been on every front page of every news? Well, the ball, the bombs are still in the air. You know, they haven't even hit the ground and exploded. Yeah, but this war should be a big story. <laughs> it's like, I mean, everyone's fucking retarded. <laughs> oh, God, I'm not going to do it. You invited Carl to headline without uh, watching his show? Headline? I mean, you're just... These are you're building up this world around you that you want it to be. Headline, it's a podcast. I don't headline. I I can't. I can't. Look. You can tear it apart all you want. I understand that you're too poor to come or too scared to come or too agoraphobic to come or you're not allowed to come or I understand all that. But you making uh, making it up to be this horrible thing so you feel better about not, yeah, everyone's going to have a bad time probably and it's going to suck. They're going to be drinking and hanging out with like-minded people and just watching shows, the good and the bad, you know, the cringe and the non-cringe, you know, it's going to be, I'm glad I'm not going. Just how does it feel to... I mean, yeah, man, whatever you want it to be. Everything's just as cool or as stupid as you want it to be. You know, don't ick yourself. Don't do it to yourself. You know, there's plenty of stuff out there in the world that can ick, ick it for Ichabod. Lame. Okay, we got to watch Chad. Uh, this drunk show's got so much more in it. I want to finish this up. And then we're going to take a walk down memory lane with Chad. Holy shit. Someone sent in these videos that Chad did when he was part of a radio station. And I think when, you know, when you watch Mondays with Mazer or all these other Chad shows, all they do, all Chad has, and this has been pointed out over and over and over, Chad's just living in the peak of his life. Back when he was around 30 years old, you know, he had a full-time job, 30, 35 years old. He was cruising. He had, he had notoriety on the local scene. He was a Tri-County legend uh, from the Alan Cox show. He was always driving around the prize van. He, he, if you knew the phrase that pays, he'd give you a bumper sticker and $100. You know, he had, a, he had it all going for him, a car, a condo on Lake Erie. He had a 78 sweater vest. Cut to today. Chad does a bunch of podcasts, which bland, uh, brands blur together. And literally every podcast he does, it doesn't matter what it is. MLC, Mondays with Mazer, Kumia's Cut. It doesn't matter what it is. They all go to one thing. Remember? Remember? Remember that movie? It, he literally, he's Chris Farley. Interviewing Patrick Swayze. That was awesome. Remember? Remember when? Remember when? So when he's with Mazer, he gets a little, he gets away with it a little more because Mazer is also 
living in the past. Mazer also has that. Remember when we were in Cleveland? Remember when we were on radio? You remember these guys coming up? Remember, remember this. Remember that. Let's watch some old Hogan's Heroes. You want to watch a clip of my old Bob and Tom? You want to watch some of my old stand-up? So they just watch these old clips of them back when they had stuff going on. That's the whole show. MLC will be like a different beast where Kevin's trying to address something and Chad will out of nowhere try to like cram his member berry crap in. You remember that movie? Uh, 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 that's pretty cool. And Kevin will just go, maybe they go, 20 members. Like, he'll just ignore it. But Chad tries to shoehorn member berries into shit all the time. And once you start breaking down Chad's life, once you start talking to these guys like Brad Thacker and Joe Howard and all these people, you realize he's he's only got the past. He's only got the, if If I kept bringing up like a third mic position that I had for a few years at a radio station as if it was the ultimate time in my life and just couldn't let it go. And every one of my podcasts, I had to pull up clips of it and show everybody. It's like, you you think I'm kidding when I tell you Chad's only skills are mimicry and member berries. It ain't. It ain't a joke. It's not, it's not hyperbole. He mimics and he goes, member, remember, remember? Remember that movie? Remember that show? Remember that song? And he'll sing, don't you, with his shaky voice because he's nervous. Forget about me as I walk on by. Hit the like button. That's Chad's whole show. This will be up later with me kind of remembering things. On this episode of Chad kind of remembers stuff he did. Keith and the girls 24 hour comedy marathon was a nonstop laughter extravaganza oh, featuring a diverse lineup of hilarious comedians from stand up performances to improvisational sketches. This marathon promises a continuous stream of humor, keeping audiences entertained around the clock. I know they With did. Keith and the girls' signature wit and dynamic hosting, it's an immersive experience for comedy enthusiasts. No, showcasing the best in the world of laughter. Uh, didn't they get rid of the girl, though? Keith and the girl did their 24-hour marathon this weekend. I imagine it was dog shit. Uh, will you ever, will you go over the Conan, the Kona mania agenda again? Huh? The event is at the Howard Johnson, so book a room there. Yeah, we'll see you there. We'll see you there. I'm going to let everybody just be retarded. Yeah, we'll see you at the Hilton. We'll see you at the Hojo. Some of us will be at the Shoney, uh, Shoney's uh, Buffet. I'm 50. <laughs> um, here's Chad Zumach last week on his only... Show of the week, a drunken show. And by the way, this weekend, no sign of the mud shark. No sign of the mud shark now that the Chad Sniping Network is up and running. Follow us on YouTube at Chad Sniping Network. And you can email us at Chad Sniping Network at gmail.com. Follow the Chad Sniping Network, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notifications when we go live when Chad goes live. Um... We'll be looking forward to the Chad Sniping Network. <laughs> Clouseau. All right. That's not what I wanted to play. All right, Chad, drunk. This is a fun show today. I haven't even showed a video clip. <laughs> I haven't even showed a fucking clip. He, what is this thing he does where he's so proud? He always looks off to the side. I haven't even showed a video clip. I haven't even showed a fucking clip. I haven't even shown one. What is that? He does it all the time. He has to look over to the side and like be smug. I got six videos to go. I haven't even touched one. He looks over at his pedestal sink. What did I miss? What was your beef with Pat Dixon? Joe Malice, ten dollars. It was um it was uh I was it was a mistake. Let's just say that. My apologies. I have no idea. I have zero idea what I said to Pat Dixon. This is 24 hours earlier, remember? He screamed at Pat Dixon and stormed off. Again, how many times has Chad stormed off MLC? 
Every time Ray's on, he runs away, closes it out. I can't do it. I can't be on if this guy's on. And I always get called a uh, chicken. Melton ran away from Chad on MLC. It's like Chad literally like a kid goes, I can't be on if Ray's on. Click, close. He does that all the time. Chad ran away from Pat Dixon the other day. I got taken off by Kevin permanently. No one ran from Chad. I mean, it's, you really have to go through mental gymnastics to take Chad's side on anything. And then for him to get puffed up, like, yeah, Melton ran for me. You run, a, you throw a little baby tantrum if someone you don't like is on MLC with your dad. Oh, you're gonna talk to Stevie Lou. Ugh, I'm I'm leaving. You're gonna talk to you're gonna talk to Ray. I'm gone. I mean, he's a bitch who runs. No one ran. No one ran. I got pulled away for sitting there and laughing only, making Chad get madder and madder and madder and yell more and more and more. It was upsetting Chad, and KB couldn't take it, so I got pulled off for upsetting his boy. They're gay. They're gay. <laughs> No one's afraid of Chad. I just don't have anything to say to the guy. I hate to tell you that's what's going to happen at AC. Chad's going to run up and go, Now what, you fat punk? Now what, you fat punk? Say it to my face. Come on. Come on, say it to my face. Oh, you're so tough on your podcast. He's going to be screaming that in a casino. And I'm going to sit there going, Just so you know, he's going to play out exactly like that again. Do you think I'm going to make a public ass out of myself like Chad Zumok? No, no. I'm going to behave like a guy with a post-secondary education, okay? I'm not going to behave like a guy who wishes he still had his Corolla and a condo. I wish it would all come back. <laughs> the way things used to be. Chad's going to whoop that ass. Can we just acknowledge that lose by two is a dollar store red bar? Mini Melton want to be lo Didn't he quit that guy? I thought he like quit his podcast. Somebody told me that he like stopped podcasting. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I don't know anything. I have no clue. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, so this is a new clip that Chad pulled that goes way too long, and Chad plays all the time apropos of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Was that what I said? Yes. Is Ray doing an impression of me talking to Pat Dixon yesterday? Was that what's going on? I'm pretty sure this is what I said to Pat Dixon yesterday. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, no one's scared of you, BYB. Nobody. I mean. See, so he reads stuff in the chat. He doesn't repeat it, so you don't know what's going on, and then he just replies to people in the chat. This is Chad's show. He puts up boring little chats to say, like, hi, mud shark for life. We're doing it. He puts those chats on the screen because he has to eat up time. Look, he does a 48-minute show, and he eats it all up with nonsense. Worse than Mubi. He just puts his stuff up, and then he reads things in the chat and replies to him so you don't know what's going on. Imagine listening to the audio version of this. This is what this is Chad's show. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. You're a loser. BYB. No, no, Mel no, Melton's not going to do anything. No, you're out of here. No, you're out of here. You guys are fucking haters. That's chat. It's like we're just watching a producer do like chat room maintenance. It's like that's the host of the show. That's the host of the show. That's the show. No, you're fucking out of here. Yeah, we're going to do it this Saturday. 
Yeah, had a great weekend. You're out of here. You're out of here. These guys are just trolls. <laughs> like, that's Chad's show. It's like just watching a clueless old man with Kmart readers navigate a chat. <laughs> hey, Patrick Hilton, you skill knee looking motherfucker. I was just pondering life and shit and was wondering if you ever Google image, search the four non motherfucking blondes. I'm not. That lesbian singer bitch is hot, but the rest of the band look like Stevie Lou Cousin. Oh, yeah. Do you have any extra room for rent and sparky fun Monopoly Go stickers? I be needing them motherfuckers to complete my sticker albums. Let me know what you need, my crazy white nickel friend. I'll tell Kevin you said hi. He be printing out his super chats and shit. She got really call me now for your free reading. She got real Jamaican towards the end of that. Started going bomba clot. <laughs> wow, she got real, real. I need the Monopoly sticker for my sticker album. <laughs> I need a Monopoly sticker for my sticker album. You know what I'm talking about. Red stripe. <laughs> How do you make it do that? Oh, God, that's better than the Australian one. Literally nobody. God, I hope that strike still goes through. I hope you didn't, like, take down the video. I want, like, a strike. I want it so bad I can taste it. I just got a text. <laughs> they said they submitted their strikes, too. So we had three strikes submitted. That'd be great. If Patrick can't podcast for two and a half weeks, he'll be screwed. So he's so dumb, he thinks he thinks if I get kicked off YouTube, I can't podcast. <laughs> like, this guy's the dumbest guy we have amongst us. He'll be forced to go to his TikTok. How many followers does Patrick have on TikTok? Okay, here we go. <laughs> like, this is getting. Tick, talk, Patrick, Melton. Okay, so all I can think about here is Chad must have looked this. I mean, I've never really tried a TikTok. Even this past, this past go where we're getting, like, I have somebody making reels now for the channel. And it's easy just to publish those reels on TikTok, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram. They get no traction on tiktok i've already stopped posting into tiktok a week and a half ago like i've never tried to post anything to tiktok for more than a week and then just go like i, I don't get any traction on this platform it's not worth it also like i hate tiktok it's so dumb so chad's gone and found a platform where i assume he's beating me i imagine chad's huge on tiktok i, I have no idea but I imagine what he's done is gone out and find a platform where he smokes me. And now I'm going to be embarrassed here. I, I don't know. Let's see what he has. Melton. Again, it's, it's, it's more embarrassing when a guy's like trying at something and getting nowhere. You go to my TikTok, you're like, he hasn't posted here since 2022. Wow, he's getting no followers. <laughs> All right. This guy's an African American. I don't think it's him. Maybe this is him. He's not even the first guy to come up. Oh, here's Melton. Uh, this is. It's not him. This is going great. This is going great. Because he has like no social media presence. Like, yeah, it's gay. It's gay. I stopped during the pandemic. Uh, Instagram, all of it. He has no. He has eighty nine. Holy shit! Well, guys, I had y'all going for a while, and uh, I didn't ever think I would be exposed like this. But he went to my TikTok. 
I told you all that I have 89 followers and the jig is up. You know, I thought I could get something going between the audio podcast and the recent success on YouTube, but I never thought anybody would look up my TikTok and, you know, even if they did, I didn't think anybody would just say out loud how many subscribers I had, you know, and the hardest part is that I've, I've, Worked my entire career on that TikTok and only 89 people. <sighs> this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. Mommy, come back. Only. I got to go. I got to go. I don't deserve your life. Okay. I mean, imagine. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Melton has 89 people following on TikTok. I hate to tell you, I think NLO has like seven. Are you funny now, Chad? Is your podcast good now? Do you have any ideas? Has anything changed for Chad Zumach? Now that the world has been exposed to the fact that Melton has 89 Twitter followers. Guys, Melton has 89 Twitter followers. So believe me, Sit Down Zumok is one of the top podcasts in the country. What? What? Why does nobody want to talk about the thing I want to talk about? I want to talk about Chad's skill and talent. And Chad's like, you're fat. You have 89 TikTok followers. You're not good. Your show's terrible. It's like, yeah, what about your? My, my show's the worst and I am the fattest. I agree. Can we move on to the topic at hand? You are not a writer for a Comedy Central roast. Uh, who is, who did he say he was the, he wrote for the roast of? Um, Flavor Flav? Flavor Flav is terrible. He's not good. That was one of mine. That was one of mine. <laughs> Flavor Flav is terrible. Sorry, that's the only tragedy I could come up with. 89 followers on TikTok. This guy is killing it. Destroying it. 89. Watch this. This is my favorite part. Look at these. He goes, he just posted this one, and then he pulls it up, and it says 2022 on it. Watch. Watch him cope. He goes, look, he just posted this one. He says those words as he looks at a 2022 post. Videos. 89 followers. Like, nobody gives a fuck. No, they don't. That's why I don't post there. No, they don't. Correct. <laughs> About Melton's videos. 300 views. And he, he just posted this. Okay, ready? He just posted this. Wow. So he just clicked on the, the, he just clicked on the most recent video and said he just posted this. He just posted this one. He just posted it. <laughs> he thinks you're dumb. He thinks you're dumb. Melton just posted this one up. Look. <laughs> Sick own, Chad. So keep on talking shit. Because I'm going to keep my composure. How many does Ray DeVito have? 89. I bet Ray has more. I bet he does too. <laughs> yeah, Ray has 2,000. 89. So Chad just made up a contest, and now I'm the biggest loser of it. <laughs> like, where did this, where did TikTok come from? A minute ago, you were going to punch me in Atlantic City. 
Wow. Talk about numbers, Melt. Talk about the numbers, Melty. So the other thing that these guys that we constantly troll about numbers don't get is like, I don't care about number. I, you never see me going like, we're kick. Look, I say we're kicking Steel Toe's ass because that was kind of the whole thing. He's like, he was like, we're going to, you know, he's a small show. We're a big pro show. And now we've passed him in the numbers. So it is hilarious. No one thinks they're doing better than Kevin Brennan. I don't even, like, I don't know what Chad makes. Who cares? You never see me once melting down about, about, uh, Kevin's money or Chad's money. The only reason we even bring up Kevin's money is because he, it's, 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 it's not, I don't. <laughs> and then I guess Shuley's getting mad now because some guy's counting the money. I get, there's a guy counting everybody's money. I don't know why he's not counting mine. He should. Out of fairness, you should probably count everybody's money. I, I don't know. For some reason, they're not counting my money. He's a guy in our Discord, I guess. I didn't even know it was this guy. Uh, single cat. What's his name? He's counting everyone's money and, like, every day putting up what everyone made. I don't know who has the time or the wherewithal and the TI-83 to do it, but he does. And he's not counting my money, and that's upsetting Shuley. I heard this weekend he said that Shuley's like, Going, how come you don't count Melton's money? You're in his Discord. Why don't you count Melton's money? So, A, Shuley's in our Discord watching what's going on. I mean, it, all these guys. Kevin Brennan666 joined our Discord last night. We don't know who it is. We're pretty sure it's not real Kevin Brennan because he can't figure out how to do Discord. But all these guys, they're going crazy. I think the guy's not counting mine because it makes people upset. But I've never sat here once. As a matter of fact, I always think I say Kevin's probably making more than all of us. Kevin's making the most in this universe. I do believe that's true. It's way less than it used to be, but I do believe it's true. But it's also why he has to do Saturday shows, sometimes Sunday shows, sometimes two Saturday shows, you know. But, like, I, I can't do anything about my money or anyone else's money. So worrying about it's retarded. What it is is, we say this all the time. We used to watch Steel Toe, and Chad used to be like, they stink, I'm better than them, my show's more popular, and we would go, Chad, it isn't. They get more views, they get more numbers, they get more money, they're winning in every... This is back when we were kind of on Chad's side about it. Chad wants to stick his hand head in dirt and just ignore facts, ignore truths of the universe i mean they they do they got more views than him they get more money they get what is this you can't there's no point in worrying about it or fighting it or trying to hide it i don't know why it makes kevin brennan squirm so much when people post his numbers up every day and again he attributes it all to me melton's over there counting my money i ain't i ain't we, I have not counted how much Kevin Brennan has made in Super Chats in months and months. We ran that program one day last week. It broke. I don't even remember what it got up to before it broke. Nobody cares because it's not actually about the count. It's about making people squirm about the count. Some people, it really is important to them to look like they have more. It's why Chad buys followers on everything. I'm not embarrassed to have 89 TikTok followers. I don't work at TikTok, and I don't know how it works. I'm dumb. I don't know how TikTok works. I don't know how YouTube works. I'm pretty YouTube retarded. That's why it's funny when I do know more than Kevin. And he's like, oh, Mountain thinks he has YouTube. I'll figure it out. It's like, no, I don't. I'm a, I, I understand it at a very base level as like a user of it who interacts with it daily. That's about it. You know, so that's why it's comical that I know more than you and you know so it's not that Kevin doesn't know much. He, it's that he's wrong. He goes in the wrong direction about it. He's like, yeah, that's why the numbers are lower because if you buy view, the numbers come up lower. It's like, what a fucking idiot. Like, it has nothing to do with that, but he wants it to be tied into that so badly that he thinks that's how it works now. And then he'll scream. Like, you think you know how it works? You can't. I know how it works. I've seen it with my own eyes. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, we can't fix broken people who believe broken things. It's, it's Corey Adams. Corey Adams, you literally go, after his show airs, six hours after the show, it's sitting there with like 57 views. And you'll be like, dude, nobody watches your show. 12 people watch your show. He's like, uh, I have a reel with 80,000. It's like, you know, no one's talking about that. We're talking about your show. 12 people watch your show. He goes, no matter what you want it to be and no matter what Melton wants it to be, those aren't the facts. Those aren't the facts. It's like, I, I, you can't help him. The guy thinks he has 80,000 fans. The guy thinks he has 1,000 people that watch him on Rumble. He told us. He's like, I had 1,000 people watch me on Rumble the other day. Corey, I, uh, honey, sweetie, baby girl, doll. No, you did it. In no world ever did you have a thousand people watching you do something. Like, never, never. I mean, I just like, what are we? But I guess, again, it makes him feel good to take that blanket of a lie and just, oh, God, that feels good to tell myself I had a 1,000 people. He's, he's looking at the same view count we are, 57. Oh, I just got a $50 Venmo. That's what Chad says. Keep killing a player. <laughs> no, he's just reading chats again. I just got a $50 Venmo. That's what Chad says. Keeps killing a player. Let's check Venmo. Shall we? Just in the middle of your show. Just let's go check Venmo. You've become everything you hate. You've become every fucking thing you hate. Let's go. Let's pause the show and go check Venmo. Let's check Venmo. Uh, when you when you realize he does shows that are 48 minutes long and they're full of stuff like this, you it really will click with you. Like, he has no fucking idea in his head about what to do to entertain anyone. Let's check Patrick's TikTok. Let's check Venmo. Bill from New Jersey says, you're blocked. I mean, this is the show. Good idea. Let's check Venmo. This is the show. 48 minutes of, what do you want to do now? <laughs> um, I did get a $5 Venmo. I'm not saying, because today I'm scattered and I'm kind of all over the place and having some, some uh, blank out moments. You know, eh, okay, but we're going to do four hours and, you know, there'll be, there'll be some content. Imagine if you only did 48 minutes and it was full of these blunders and bloopers and nothing burgers. You want to check Venmo? Let's see how many followers he has. Isn't that stupid? Hit the like button. Here's my hot sauce. I'll be doing a show later with Mazer. This will be up later. Join my Patreon. It's like there's there's 20 minutes left to do anything. And then when, and then when he has the 20 minutes, he'll be like, you guys want to watch my old Bob and Tom? You guys want to pull up some of my old stand-up? Let's watch, let's watch Ray suck and then watch five minutes of it. I can't even take it anymore and turn it off. It's like, okay, another quality Chad program. Will this be up later? From Jeff. Keep killing it, shark. So. Just, just, just a remedial reading level, Chad. Just got a Venmo from Jeff. Keep killing it shark. So, so that's there. <laughs> that backfired on you, not me. Thank you. Thank you for your contributions. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. This is the show. This is your show. When you wonder what you get from Chad, this is your show. And, and if you want to contribute, you can go Venmo, PayPal, Zoom. Contribute for what? Contribute for what? Uh, Cash App, um, Streamlabs, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you got to do, guys. Whatever you want to do. We're all here. For, we're, for, we're here for it. This guy's trolling me with money. This is crazy. Even if you don't consider yourself a moron comedian. Again, 
This guy's not insulting Chad at all, but Chad has such low self-esteem, he's going to read it as an insult and get hurt. And you must admit, the majority of your peers are. Was it a troll? Yes. But a real question. I mean, you could say that about any workforce, any climate, any... You could say that about anybody. You know? If you work at a car dealership, a library, a pizza place... You're going to have some numbskull coworkers. You're going to have some idiot coworkers. You know? So why is it just got to be focused on comedians? Like why do you have to like put the target on a comedian's back? Why can't we focus on on insurance salesmen in that profession? How about we How about we frown upon Is this a bit? Is he riffing? Insurance salesmen. Insurance salesmen. I mean, he really is a midwit. Let's put a target on their back. How come they're all fucking idiots? Anybody that sells insurance is a fucking idiot. Where did this come from? Did he just try to get insurance and couldn't or something? Why is he so mad at insurance salesmen out of nowhere? Okay. Insurance salesmen. <laughs> you know those real assholes of the world? Insurance salesmen. Everyone's always gunning for comedians. Everyone. They are? <laughs> Everybody, including comedians. Bon Levy talking <laughs> trash on me this weekend on Twitter. Patty has gone after you plenty. No need to apologize. You were also right that he loves Melton when not on MLC. He said you did it for Gino. All right, let me read that again. You were also right that he loves Melton when not on MLC. He said you did it for Gino. Man, Mel, I mean, I don't have really anything against Dixon. I, I've seen him take jabs at me. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't really, I don't find him all that funny. If that's, if I'm allowed to say that, like I'm not a huge fan of his when he's on MLC. Chad's not a fan of anyone on MLC. That's his daddy and his yard. It's like it's like watching uh, another dude plow your ex, you know? But Chad can't turn away because Chad's kind of a cuck and his dick doesn't work. So he likes to watch because he likes to see how it's done. You know, he likes to watch Melton on MLC. He likes to watch Stevie on MLC. He likes to watch Pat Dixon on MLC. He likes to watch Ray on MLC. He gets mad. You know, I, I, I imagine how many times Chad has smashed his phone looking at porn because he wishes that was his dick going in that pretty lady. <laughs> you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's like Chad gets so mad at anyone on MLC because he's like, oh, I wish that was me with Kevin. Imagine wanting Kevin's approval. It's like Kevin's one of the most out of it dopes on the planet. And you need Kevin's approval of for what? For what? You're 50, he's 63. He's not got, like, some untapped wisdom that you don't possess. I mean, uh, you could argue he's more stunted than most people his age. But, you know, the fact that he's afraid of grown men, the fact that he's afraid of things on the Internet he doesn't understand, it's bananas. How would you even argue that, like, there's a lot to learn from Kevin Brennan and I need to be in his sphere so I can soak up some of it? Yeah, keep Eddie's back. He cracked me up, Chad. So he's in the middle of saying something, and then he gets distracted. Yeah, keep oh, Eddie's back. <laughs> Love you no matter what anyone says. You sound like my mom. I mean, if we wanted to sound like your mom, we'd go, Have you seen your brother? <laughs> if, that, if we wanted to do an impression of your mom, that's what we'd do. You fucking idiot. You know? <laughs> yeah, your mom was always going around saying how much she loved you. Is that a new mark on your forehead? Your stepdad did get a new coffee cup. Ah, 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 ah. Have you seen my Chevy Nova? <laughs> sound just like my mom. <laughs> yes. Yes. Or you sound like Ryan. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 
Uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! What else, Chad? What else you got in the old idea bag? <laughs> this was a fun weekend, man. Okay, just to remember, just a reminder, Chad had a base, not even a full feature weekend. He featured for three shows on two nights for TJ Miller, and he cannot stop living the high life. He, he he spent two days with TJ Miller and he never, ever, ever gets to work real clubs. He never, ever, ever gets to have real feature weekends and he is floating in case you don't remember. He's had the best fucking weekend he's ever had in years. He admitted, and he just keeps going. No one can take this away from me. It's so bizarre. He just keeps going. No one can ever take this weekend away from me. Me and TJ Miller, two nights of fury. No one will ever. This is the most fun weekend of my life. Again, it's just like a basic feature weekend at an A club, and he is shitting his pants about it. This was a fun, fun weekend. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, hit the like button. I mean, what is the show, man? that hype train we haven't done so far we looked up melton's tiktok that sucks uh what else <laughs> on a hype train in two and a half weeks k hates that drop here we go you ready for some good old sexual assault then you're gonna want to come down to hackamania hackamania.com for deep this is all chad has i'm not editing this this is what chad has he's just going to replay this over and over and over again he got nothing for you uh, 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 uh. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Chad doesn't even have a comment about it afterwards. He just laughs like, ain't I a stinker? I played that. I did that. Uh, 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 uh. Playing it for the third time in a row with no words in between. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not even mad at Ray. I'm looking past Ray. At, look, this wasn't good when it was on Ray's show. But now we have Chad filling an hour with nothing. How long until everyone's calling him out for this? It's time to start taking show notes of Chad's show. This will drive him crazy, too. You know how stuff gets in Chad's head and he gets real self-conscious? Start keeping minutes. Write down the time and what he talks about. And you will very quickly realize. I mean, you want to talk about this will annoy Chad more than keeping track of KB's money. Keep notes and chapter notes on what chad shows are about told everybody hit the like button plug the hot sauce kept playing ray's thing for 10 minutes like checked in on melton's tiktok numbers i mean it this will drive him nuts because you'll see it listed out on paper how empty his brain is yeah yeah uh, uh, Fourth time he's playing it. Fourth time he's playing it, just grinning at the screen. He has nothing to say. So he played it four times, and he and he has nothing to even say. There's no commentary, even just four plays, and then <laughs> it's the sit down zoom auction. Sorry, KB. KB in her big titty. He wants so badly, before I, I play this uh, um, borderline sexual assault, he wants so badly to be me. I do feel like that. He started this thing where he like sings a little bit, but he doesn't have anywhere to go with it. 
We're doing it, KB, having a good time, singing on my show. It's like, that's great, Chad. That's great. People are going to love that. Keep it up. Keep it up. This is where it gets a little graphic, and he starts uh, kind of assaulting KB a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, K. B K B in her big titties. From what I hear, that's what people are saying. I can't confirm or deny. I never met you in person. People, but people are telling me that those breasts are big. Great show, Chad. It's the best. It's the greatest show in the world. Chad thinks his show is the greatest show in the world. I love it. I love everything about me. This is so good. This is my favorite line of Chad's show. Everything about me is great. Everything about me is great. Watch the drunk motor control here. You'll see a little Michael J. Fox. I wish I was kidding. Watch a little bit of Michael J. Fox loss of motor control in his face here. That those breasts are big. Great show, Chad. It's the best. It's the greatest show in the world. I love it. I love everything about me. Watch here. Everything about me. <sighs> Great. Uh, I had so much fun this weekend. You can't take that away from me. I mean, we're looking at a guy with no prospects. And the reason I want to watch is before we get into Chad's uh, memory lane stuff today. I want you to see where he is now. He had a mildly fun weekend doing what, again, 22-year-old comics around the country do every weekend. They feature some for somebody and open for somebody. Chad hasn't done this at a real club in for so long. He's on cloud nine about it. This reminds him of when he was somebody at the radio station. And he's just fucking floating. You can't take that away. Like, no one's trying to do that. No one's ever said, Chad, you didn't have fun this weekend. We want to take it away. Uh, you're not friends with TJ Miller. You didn't go out and have fun. Like, no one's said anything about him, uh, about the weekend to him. And he just, he's been doing this the whole show, over 30 minutes. And you can't take this weekend away from me. No one will ever take away how much fun I had this weekend from me. It's like, okay, Nana. Okay, we get it. Heart of the ocean. It's all yours. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what I heard. Jesus. You offended? I'm just telling you what I heard. I didn't say I'm. I'm relaying information from other people. Okay. They tell me what <sighs> your chest looks like, and now I tell the world. You can fight it. You can do whatever you got to go. You can do whatever you got to go. I mean, he's just drunk. You can do whatever you got to go. <laughs> you can do whatever you got to go. No, I'm not offended. I mean, I don't know. I guess I'll be the judge. The funniest part about all this is him constantly asking for money on his Venmo and stuff for this. Join. This will be up later. Please become a member. This will be up later. I mean, he does one of these a week, and it's, an, it's just a complete content void, you know, Capri son of shit. You poke the straw into the metal pouch, and you go, oh, fuck. I got to drink this whole thing. Nobody wants cherry. I don't know. 
Until then, jury's out. Until then, the jury's out about KB's boobs. Until I see them, I don't want to hear it. Not creepy at all. Not creepy one bit. Um, I was watching something on the Shuli Network the other day, and I and I learned how to uh, for the first time in months, and I learned how to pronounce uh, Real's name. Didn't they say your name was like Rael, like Azrael, Rael, Rael, Reels, Reels, Real. Oh fuck, I've lost it. No, I'm not offended. You already put that up, and he forgot. I don't know. I guess I'll be the judge. I don't know. Until then, Chad's going to be the judge of these titties. Okay, that face is, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) He just wants to judge your titties, KB. He just wants to judge your titties. Just a normal guy. Losing weight. Definitely doesn't have nine chins here. Jury's out. Until then, the jury's out. About KB's boobs. Until I see them, I don't want to hear it. No more reports. I don't want more. Don't Watch how many times he says, until I see them. I want to see him until I see him. You can do whatever you got to go. You can do whatever you got to go. Do what you can do. What you got to go, go, go where you got to, got to do. Do whatever with whom you've got to do it. Go. Remember that mama's and papa song? No, I'm not offended. I mean... Chad could give two fucks. That's Chad. I don't know. I guess I'll be the judge. I don't know. Until then, jury's out. Until then, the jury's out. About KB's boobs. Until I see them, I don't want to hear it. No more reports. I don't want more. Don't send me any information on KB. So he's implying that people have been sending him information about KB's breasts? I mean, what? What is going on? I never want to hear about our Discord again being creepy. I mean, Chad's show is creepier than our Discord any day of the week. Unless you talk to Stevie Lou, and Stevie Lou will go along with whatever conspiracy you want to make up. Yeah, but Melton's is probably creepier when you factor in the fact that Melton's always lurking and thinking about gross stuff about the ladies privately in his own head. And Stevie Lou will be like, yeah, probably. I never thought about it like that. Good job, Kevin. <laughs> and, then, and then it's just right back to sucking KB dick, right? Yeah, yeah, I never. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything about her. Leave me alone. Leave him alone about KB's tits, guys. Enough emails. Like, what? Like, what in the actual fuck? Flimsy Greenberg gifting 10 memberships. Uh, I think we already got that, but thank you so much. LL Cooley, guess who just bought a VIP membership? See at the Grand. We did that one. Okay, just want to make sure. I don't like to leave people hanging for too long. Oh, my goodness. I heard Ray has a complicated history with heterosexuality. (laughs) I didn't say that either. Now, Johnny Rockwell says they're big milkers. Of course, I get all my news from Johnny Rockwell. He's my USA Today. He's my Sports Illustrated. He's my Outkick the Program. He's my Fox News. Have you seen anything yet that would indicate Chad planned anything for today's show? Anything at all. Oh, he's reading again, so this will take a while. Get ready for the silence while he reads. Uh, Everyone's talking about K. 
K needs to show those bad boys of at AC to Chad. Oh, those bad boys. I mean, this is just like this is. Yeah, bring your boobs, man. Let's let's get a look. I mean, imagine just being like. Luckily, KB's pretty cool, but like, this is not okay, man. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> And you might go, Patrick, you made jokes about KB's tits. It's like, I make the joke and I move on. I make it. First of all, I make it and I try to make it funny. And then even if it's not, it's over and moved on. I don't keep circling back like, yeah, I want to see him. She needs, she needs to bring him. I need to see him. I want to judge him. Bring those honkers. Yeah, they're big milkers. You should keep put, putting up comments about him and stuff. It's like. Does it feel fun? Does it feel funny? I, I don't know. I met KB. I oh, I met KB twice. Don't be, you know, like. Don't be fucking weird around people. Okay, let's get a look at those things. I won't touch. I'll just like look. I'll be like looking around. I'll get like a side view. Jack Damon, dollar ninety nine. I... Shut up, Melton. At least Chad don't dox the fans. Remember Jesse Homo? Oh yeah, what was her last name? And where does she work? And where does she live? Does any do, do people not know what dox me? Like, serious question. Yeah, I remember Jesse. What do you know about her? Here's how I know you don't know anything about Jesse, and she wasn't doxed. I don't know anything about Jesse. Here's how I know I didn't dock someone. I don't know their info. So I'm not worried about it. Go to the cops. Go to the police. Go get anybody you have to go get. You know how I know I didn't dox her? I don't know her information. I don't have a clue what her last name is. I don't know what ethnicity she is. After all this, is she black? Is she Puerto Rican? Is she Dominican? Is she Hispanic? I... So, yeah, I remember, Jesse. Do you? Do you know more about her than me? Then you doxed her. Because I, I didn't look up anything about her. I couldn't have possibly doxed her. I, do, I doxed the fan last week and nobody even caught it. Thank God. And only the fan knows who it is. So, yeah, I remember her. Do you? What was all her personal information again? Oh, right, no one knows? Then then I don't think she was docked. Now, I know Red Honda's like a troll and not a fan, but I, I do want to address that. Like, I've never doxed people on this. It's why people are lining up to fork over $100 to me for a show. They trust me. They trust me. We're going to have a fun show. We're going to have an event. Who's play? We're all playing you. Carl and the five people he's bringing, they're playing you, and Pat Dixon and, and Tukey's playing you, and Ray's playing you. We're all stealing your money. It's not a real event. Hackamania.com, May 31st through June 2nd. Pick up your tickets. Pick up your tickets. And I can't emphasize this enough. There will be no more releases of VIP tickets. Now, the VIP tickets only do a few things. You're supporting, you're supporting the, the event, of course. On a, on a more grand scale, you'll get a special VIP badge. I'm working on, I'm not even going to make the promise, but I'm working on something else for VIPs, but no big, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to, I'm under promising and over delivering on this event. That's what I'm trying to do across the board. Uh, but it will be a VIP mixer before the uh, stand up shows on Friday night for the VIPs. And then maybe at the barbecue, we'll have a little roped-off area where only VIPs can go. There won't be anything in the roped-off area. It'll literally be a rope that's in a square. But the VIPs will be allowed to stand in that just to get away from the ick of the regulars. You know? Maybe we'll have a special barbecue sauce that only the VIP. Oh, you know what we could do? I have my Mud, Mud Shark Mango Madness hot sauce. We'll have that at the... At the barbecue, so people can put it on their their pork and brisket and stuff, and you can taste the mud shark with your mouth. 
Scratch that. It sounded really gross. So a Matt Damon movie this week. Anyways, why do you think people pile on you so much? Because I don't care. Great Chad logic here. The reason people don't leave Chad alone and fuck with Chad so much is because he lets it all roll right off his back. The reason people fuck with Chad is because he doesn't care. We all know in this universe, the people who get fucked with the most are the ones who don't let it bother them. That is how trolling works. That is how tro- it's again. It's why Carl doesn't get as much. But Carl gets ripped apart. Carl rarely ever covers Carl being ripped apart. Unless it's some other reactionary like John or Kevin. But if you don't see the difference between Tukey and Kevin or Carl and Kevin. It's like because they don't let it eat them up. You know, people scream at me all day like you don't have a real Lexus. You don't have a wife. Hackamania is going to suck. Chad owns your head. Okay. I mean, I can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, what I'm going to do is what, what, I, what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here and spin my wheels arguing with you. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't have a Lexus. You got me. Can we all move on now? The difference between me and Ray is Ray wants everyone to like him. Why do you get people talk? Why do people pile on you so much? Because I don't care. <laughs> and he's just naturally annoying where I prefer you don't. If you're on the fence, go away. I mean, what a what a bitch. What a baby. I don't even want you. If you're on the fence, if you're not sure if you like me, I, I want you. Hit the like button. How are we not how are we 500 viewers and we're not over over 200 likes? Can we get there, please? I I want you to like the show. I want everyone sitting out there watching the show hating it, ambiguous to it on the fence about it i want you all to eventually come over i do i do what i mean i'd be mentally ill if i was like i don't give a fuck now look i can't control it i'm not gonna lose sleep over it but everyone wants to be liked everyone wants people to enjoy it i think you'll have more fun if you enjoy it you know a lot of the haters they find themselves getting mixed up in conversations in the chat sometimes they forget their mission wait I'm here to hate Melton, not to become part of this. <laughs> and then they get conflicted in their head. And they're like, fuck, I'm talking with people about something that I know about. And I'm enjoying it and having camaraderie and these online relationships. But I'm supposed to be watching Melton and tearing him down. And he's so dumb. And fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping you forget yourself and become a fan. I'm hoping you hate watch it every day and come on over. I'm, ha- I'm hoping you... Uh, just learn to tolerate it. And if you're just tolerating it, I hope you learn to love it. Chad's like, if you're not sure whether you like this show or not, fuck off. And I say that kind of stuff all the time. I want you to be here. I want you to enjoy the show. I want you to have a good time. I'm not here to make your life miserable. And you shouldn't spend hours of your day doing something, making it part of your routine that brings you misery. Now, if you're like, Patrick, I love making fun of you every day. It's great. Then that brings you happiness. That brings you happiness. In a way, you could say that the show brings you happiness, even though my lack of talent and complete buffoonery is just here for mocking. Uh, Jesus said to her, listen, cunt, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this, you piece of shit? That's what I want. I want Bible verses read by Kevin followed by, and and what is this fucking piece of shit going to get? Jesus never got super chat. You show me Jesus is 1099. I guarantee I got more super chats than Jesus. How many, how, how many, how many Jesus uh, super chats did Jesus get? There's not one mention of the Bible. No gifted memberships. There were just 12 of them. I'm not going to win you over. I don't want to win you over. I'm not going to win you over. I don't want to win you over. When you set goals like that, you're going to reach them. You're going to reach them. 
You're already there. You're already when you set a goal to do nothing, you you really, really do reach the pinnacle. Somebody was arguing with uh, someone. I can't even keep track of all the people every day on Twitter who have their little meltdowns. But someone was arguing with him like, I'm sorry, KB will never put on an event for you. It's like, I don't, it's not even that. It's like, look, I, I've been putting this off forever, organizing this thing. It is putting yourself out there. It is taking a chance. We're going to try to throw an event. It might suck. It might fail. It might flop. I got to tell you this. I feel great about it after this weekend. I mean, the, the ticket sales are going great. They're really going great. Is why I feel the need to warn people there will be no more VIP tickets. There are 50 VIP tickets total. That's what's available. And when they're gone, I'm not kidding you, they're gone. There will be no more VIP tickets. And this is unfortunate for Carl and the uh, WAT peers because I don't think Carl's even going to mention this um, event and gig for a month. So literally the VIPs could be completely gone before Carl's fans even get to them. So I'm telling Ray, I'm telling Tukey, I'm telling Pat Dixon, telling Earl Skakel, you know, the tickets are out there. They're on sale. Uh, Carl has his event in March in Florida, so he's worried about selling that. And not worried. I don't want this to get back to him like he's worried. But no, that's what he's focused on, selling those tickets for the March event. So he's not going to switch over for a month or so to promoting this. The VIPs could be completely gone by then. They just could. Um, there's no VIPs held back. There are only 50 in the system. It's what they are. And I don't want to hear about it later on when you can't get in or you don't have a cool colored badge. <laughs> uh, thought about doing the VIP, but not sure my simp is hard enough. You don't, you don't have to literally the only thing you're going to get out of this that I'm guaranteeing you out of this is, you know, the clout you'll get from a special badge at the event. You are supporting the event and helping us out. You know, this is going to cost a lot, a lot of money. And uh, a little VIP mixer with the talent before the show. So just, you know, an hour or two where you'll get to hang out and have a drink and some some food. We're not even covering that. You know, you got to pay for it. This isn't like an open bar situation. Everything's, the only thing I'm including food and drink in is, is in the barbecue. But, um... No, it's just like a little thank you where it'll be less crowded and you'll have some time to, like, talk with the people and stuff. But that'll be available all weekend. I'm not under the delusion that, like, if you don't get to talk to Tukey at the VIP mixer, you won't be able to catch up with Tukey all weekend. Tukey will be around. Carl will be around. I'll be around. And everybody will be accessible. So it's not – I'm not under the delusion that I'm selling some sort of exclusive VIP ticket here that's only going to get you – it's a nice thing that lets people throw a little extra money at us if they have some extra money. And again, just helps us get in the black quicker um, with this event. I My goal is really to like hand everybody some cash at the event and make sure people do make some money for coming out here. But this is the first time we've ever done anything like this. So, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot to it, even though it's a very simple event. Um, but I would say if you're on the fence about VIP or not VIP, don't worry about it. You know, grab a ticket, get a ticket for somebody else uh, to come out and hang with you. It's it's not going to be something that, like, they're not really going to understand or whatever. The Friday night stuff's going to be stand-up. The Saturday's going to be podcasts. And, um, yeah, and like I said, if you can't make it at all, we are going to have some sort of digital pass where you can watch and stream it online um, so you don't miss out. Uh, okay? Okay. Sorry, we will not we will not talk about this this much every day. It's just the first day we're launching uh, where I've had a regular show. So I do want to make sure people know about it and grab their ticket. Because I don't want to hear about it. Hanging with B. Dabbler is totally worth it. He's even funnier in person, says Baloney. I believe it. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good time. It'll be a great time. That's how I always do it. And the people that pile on are like people I probably would not have hang I, I probably would not hang out with in real life. I mean, these are bottom of the barrel people like Quadfather. Who does Chad hang out with? <laughs> Chad today, Chad on uh, Twitter yesterday is trying to get everybody to, to think he's friends with Shane Gillis. Because I guess Shane Gillis got tapped to do SNL which is like the ultimate F you, you know, like SNL needs Shane Gillis for like validity now. 
Like Shane Gillis got kicked from SNL for Bowen Yang. Bowen Yang was Asian. Bowen Yang and, and Shane Gillis are supposed to get hired at the same time. And Shane Gillis gets kicked off because he made some Asian voices and Bowen Yang didn't like that. The gay Asian. And now, like, Shane Gillis is one of the biggest stand-ups in the country. He probably never would have had that success if he had to go be safe on SNL every Saturday Night Live. He wouldn't be able to tour like he does. He wouldn't be able to go on Rogan all the time. And so now SNL has to invite Shane Gillis back to host. He definitely wouldn't have been hosting. Shane Gillis would have never hosted SNL if he was on SNL. So it's like the ultimate fuck you. But now Chad is, of course, because this is in the news, now Chad is like, I'm friends with Shane Gillis. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, how much can you? Bill Burr used to sit and record his show in my house. And I don't have the fucking nuts to tell you Bill Burr and I are friends. You know what I mean? Like, I, Bill Burr knows who I am. <laughs> but I haven't talked to that dude in over five years. I uh, To sit here and be like, Bill Burr is my friend. That's what Chad would do. You think Chad and Shane Gillis are friends? Get fucking real. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. He's a hack. He's a Horatio, a fellow of infinite Jeff. Our AI might need a reboot. Alas, poor Yorick. He's a hack. He's a Horatio, a fellow of infinite Jeff. Alas, poor Yorick. He's a hack, Horatio, a fellow of infinite Jeff. Why is he so hoarse? These are garbage human beings that look like Stevie Lou. These are the people. Stevie Lou's still coming to AC? I don't even fucking know anymore. Like, I'm not going out of my way to make friends with. Ray does. Ray sends him the link. Ray wants to hang with them. Ray wants to stay at their house. I don't. You do. You do. No one buys this Chad isn't desperate for friends act. Last week he offered me to come do his Atlantic shitty sh sh Atlantic shitty show again. Melton, come do a set. No, no, loser. No, stop trying to get me to come do your thing and be your friend, weirdo. Ray's a loser. Nobody wants to hang with Ray. Ray, will you come do my show? Gino's a fucking loser and a hack. Nobody wants to hang with Gino. Gino, do you want to come do his show? Nobody wants to hang with Melton. Melton's a loser. Melton, do you want to come do my show? <laughs> it's like, I mean, who do you think you're kidding, baby girl? You can't stop asking for your enemies to come hang out with you. You fucking loser. We know better. You screamed on this very program last week when you were drunk. Why don't you like me? Quadfather, how come you don't like me? Why don't you like me? I don't, I'll never know why you don't like me. Why don't you like me? You bitch. You bitch. You need everyone to like you. You do. You do care. We saw you go, why don't you like me? So <laughs> if you ever catch me going, why don't you like me? In a serious, real, broken down place. And I, I meant that when I said it. When the funniest people in the world think I'm hilarious. So he really believes that. The funniest people in the world think Chad is hilarious. I said it before. I'll say it again. TJ Miller hasn't shut up about Chad since he got back to L.A. TJ Miller's running around telling everybody, you got to get this Zumok fella. Have you heard about Chad Zumok? Oh, my God. The wit. Why do I give a fuck what the unfunniest people in the world the think? The funniest people in the world think Chad is hilarious. Woo! Cope! You can call me Nannerpuss, Nannerpuss. And guess what? I love Nannerpuss. I don't. I really don't. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. You think I want you as a fan? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I keep bringing it up all the time. I don't. I don't. When I got a whole comedy club, 300 people laughing their fucking asses off. 
that's all I need. There's your judge jury right there. Like, there's your judge jury. There's your judge jury right there. What else? You're trying to say all this is not happening? What is he even talking about? You know? You know, there's a, like a, a merch line to uh, to meet me. I mean, he is on Fantasy Island. There's a merch line out the door to meet me. <laughs> He's never, ever, 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 ever worked. I mean, this is every club, every weekend as a working comic. He's gushing about it. 300 people were laughing. There was a merch line. <sighs> Holy shit, what a loser. Uh, Jesus uh, answered, it is written, what man shall not live uh, on bread alone, but on every uh, super chat that comes from these fucking uh, losers. And pick up a uh, pen, pick up a parchment. This verse is part of Jesus' response to Satan during his temptation in the wilderness, where he affirms the importance of spiritual nourishment alongside physical, uh, physical sustenance. sustenance. You translucent, sweat pink skinned motherfucker, get off the internet. Come have some jerk stew with your family instead of yelling at the internet. Our neighbors are tired of hearing your bullshit. And get this fucking bicycle out of my hallway. To get photos and buy my merch? To get photos and buy my merch. He wants us to believe there was a line out the door to get his merch and take photos with him. Now, I've seen Chad come to shows with merch. He brings three bottles of hot sauce and seven shirts for a weekend for six shows. So this is just delusional nonsense. Chad's not on top of his business. He doesn't have merch always in stock to sell. He doesn't plan for things like this. No one was there to see him. No one was there for his photo. This is insanity. This is bananity. Go look at Chad Zumok's mentions and see how many people tagged Chad Zumok this past weekend with photos of him saying, had a great weekend watching Chad Zumok. I mean, when you work at a comedy club, this happens. You get a few no matter what. You know? Go back when I was working at a club one weekend and just check mentions. You'll get a couple. There was a line out the door for my merch and to take pictures. <laughs> it's that didn't happen either. Okay. Yeah, it didn't. But uh <laughs> uh Patrick Melton doesn't think I'm funny. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. But that's what he was thinking while he was there. Huh. See all these people in line? Melton thinks I'm not funny. <laughs> Take that, Melton. It's like, what the fuck? I'm glad Kevin's coming around on Melton, seeing what he's all about. You guys are going to be the ones. Kevin's coming around on Melton, seeing what he's all about. You guys are going to be the ones late to the game. That's what it is. What it is, dog. Can we get back to KB's chest? Or are we going to just talk about <coughs> Lance? I mean, do you see his train of thought? He's all over the place. Did you address your invite to Hackamania? I was never invited, and I don't think I'd go anyway. Sounds terrible. So when Chad organizes a show, he's like, what are we going to do, not do a show? Why are we not going to do a show? Let's give something back. Let's do something for the fans. Let's put on something for the people, you know? Why, why, when I want to do it, is it going to be terrible and awful and awkward? And then when Chad wants to do it, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be transformative and change the world. Remember, this is, We're not this gonna... is Chad trying to convince Bob and Kevin to come do an event with me in Vegas.
I'll stay well, local. Why would I? Pay. Why would I go if I, uh, I'm not going? If I'm not getting paid, I'm not. Who's going to pay you? Dude, I'm going to have to pay you. Milton, 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 Milton he, he puts on. He puts it. on this. Stuff. He's been doing this forever. Like he's put on all of his shows are successful. We, you don't have to do. All you have to do is show up. You'll have a hotel. Your flight will be paid for. You'll have money. Who's going to pay me? Melton's going to pay Melton, me. Melton he's a producer. He's, oh. Yeah. He, He'll make he sure said you can even take you could take a door deal like or you can get a set pay a guarantee. I'd rather get a guarantee. Wait, he 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 runs a room or he just he's a promoter. He, he can do it. He, no, he, he's he's done he it like since two thousand five, like producing shows. He's a producer. He's he's done it forever. I mean, he all that and now it's gonna suck. Yeah, I want to go. That sounds like great. This sounds like a good time. So when he was part of it, he wanted to do it. When he was part of it, he wanted to be in on it. It was going to be awesome. Vegas shows. But now, now that a picture's coming out where he eats burgers with fans, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to be a part of this. He wants to be a part of anything. So badly. Chad, Chad's realized the same thing the rest of us has realized. Chad can't do anything on his own. His own podcast on his own failure. He tries to surround himself with anybody who will do a show with Chad, but anybody who will do a show with Chad is also too dull to realize they're dull and Chad's dull. It's like, no offense, but like Earl Skakel and Chad mixing it up is kind of dull. Tony Mazer and Chad mixing it up, dull. These aren't, there's no lead guy. We have Chad and Tony Mazer. We have two third mics. So all they can do is remember these guys, remember this clip, remember that, remember this. You know, and again, I think Earl Skagel's on a higher level than Chad, but Earl Earl's a nice guy. He's not going to call Chad out for all Chad's shortcomings. I just checked TikTok and Patrick has no followers. Ha <laughs> ha, what a bitch. Uh, it's it, and I'm killing it uh, on MySpace, Google, uh, Wave, and Friendster. Join me in the IRC chat, hashtag chicken parm boys, and send me your ASL. Patrick barely has any Vine or Google Plus followers. I'm in showbiz, baby. <laughs> Patrick doesn't have any Vine or Google Plus followers. Can you get me a hotel room? I'm now, don't forget, Chad's used this as a flex before. Ray, have you ever stayed in a hotel room to do comedy? And now Chad's like, oh, am I going to get a hotel room? It's like, I mean, your standards keep changing for what you'll do. I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it. I want to meet Patrick Melton in person. What's he like? What's he like in person? I hear somebody calling him out on his obvious, obvious lie about, oh, people pick on me because I don't care. <laughs> Now watch him try to, he, he, he knows, A, first of all, he hates when there's a paragraph to read because he knows he's going to flub it. And he can also tell from just looking at this, it's not on his side. I want to watch him vape. Here we go. You want to see a cope? Here we go. Jack Damon, $10. To be clear, you think people pile on you because you don't care. You don't care. So he's not even reading it. He's not even processing what it's asking. He just went into a song and dance. Wouldn't that make them not want to pile on you? The guy's saying, people pi you think people pile on because you don't care? That makes people not pile on you. But Chad thinks you're wrong if you think that. When you pop up on MLC and start ye yelling at Melon, doesn't that prove you do care? No. No. Wrong. We're all looking for the guy who did this. We're all trying to find the guy who did this and give him a spanking. <laughs> Wrong. Doesn't it prove you do care? No. Next question. <laughs> Does not. Does not. Right. You have it backwards. You don't know how psychology works. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> I like how you, uh, you went deep on it. He didn't go deep. This is psychology one-on-one. -on -one. People said, why do pe so many people pile on you, Chad? And you said, because I don't care. <laughs> He's like, you're trying to go deep. <laughs> you pulled armchair psychologists out on that one. I mean, he really has nothing. 
I mean, you really, really put a lot of thought into that. Not as much as Chad. He's a re- he's a regular Play-Doh, this guy. He's a Socrates. <laughs> you can tell how quiet he is afterwards, and he's just contemplating it. Does that mean that I care more? Fuck. Do I have it backwards? <laughs> uh, Pay said he'd pay your airfare and hotel. Who's Pay? Pay? Pay. Oh, you probably meant Pat, but you put the Y by accident. Nothing gets by this guy. Okay, yeah. pay. Then, yeah, pay for all of it, Patrick. I'll show up. And then here we go. Watch this after this. Yeah, Melton, if you pay for my Air Fort hotel. Air Fort. Patrick, just pay for my Air Fort. <laughs> pay me. I'll show up to your event. I will. If you pay for my Air Fort, all is forgiven. And I'll make it incredibly awkward the whole time. For- oh, well, then definitely come. Now, we've heard this from Chad before. I mean, this is Chad's only battle cry for events. We heard it today about AC. Melton, I'm going to come right up to you. I'm going to make it so awkward. We heard he was going to do this last year at AC. I'm coming to AC. It's going to be so awkward. We also heard this about the Cheetos uh, uh, Stoney's Bar event for Steel Toe. I'm going to show up and walk in there with my phone out and just make it so awkward for everyone. It's like, eh, you aren't. You aren't. I'm going to get to stomping in my Air Fort Ones. So it's almost like a tell when Chad has nothing and is going to do nothing. He tells everybody he's going to show up and make it awkward. This is the fourth or fifth time I've heard him threaten to do this at an event, and he's never done it once. He's backed out of every one. I'm going to show up and make it weird. Now, he has to say that because he doesn't know. Like, if Chad's around, it shall just be weird. There's no such thing as Chad being around and it being normal. Performance is sung to the tune of the hit ACDC song Dirty Deeds, and it will be performed by the NLO singers. Hit it, KB and April. Dirty dishes washed in a sink. Dirty dishes, I call Chad Zaddy. Dirty dishes, I am a hack first groupie. Dirty dishes and a whisk inside me. Dirty dishes and a whisk inside me. Dirty dishes and a whisk inside. Everybody. So, yeah, let's do it. Get back to him. Email him back. Go go, go tell Melton, yeah, I'll do it. I don't book events through hearsay and horse shit. That's why I tried talking to Stevie Lou about this a couple of weeks ago, and then he went off on his whole work and being weird and not answering questions. So guess what? Negotiations ceased immediately, and St- I'm not talking to Stevie Lou about coming out to this event anymore. I can't. I don't have time to, like cut through your work to like talk to you to book you for something same reason with gino now gino's like i'm not doing it i am doing it i will do it Uh, it's a fucking fag fest okay i'm in now he's proud of the event it's on his calendar it's like get the fuck out of here i don't need these are losers who can't commit to anything or communicate so gino's not on any list stevie lou's not on any lists and chad's not on any lists now, Stevie Lou's in the chat. We talked about this. That never happened. Okay. Okay. We never talked about you coming out to Hackamania. We never talked about me putting you up, possibly paying you money. Okay. It never happened then. Agree to disagree. Can you prove it never happened? Because I can prove it did happen. So I guess that's where we're left. Pay for everything. I want I want first class Delta. <laughs> Delta? Which do you want? First of all, you were a United. Oh, he's a Delta snob or United snob? He's a Delta snob. I want first class on Delta. I want one of those little hotel room fridges with the key. <laughs> to Vegas. No, you want it two here? No, I'll get I'll get you as far as uh, Shreveport, and then you got to jog. And I want a hotel room, and I'll show up. 
I'll show up. I'll come to the event. And make it awkward? Cool. And then I'll watch his magic. Is he going to do Nobody Likes Onions live? That will be fun. Is he going to do it on stage by himself? I want to see it. Yes, I'll come. Let him know I am there. Yeah. 100%. Pay for everything. Do you ever go to the Delta Lounge? What do you think? Of course. Of course, KB. I love the Delta Lounge. I love it. I love it. Free stuff. Are you turned on? You better be. It has to be a fake uh, Stevie Lou. (laughs) I can't even. I can't even. Like, you can't be a real Stevie Lou because we did talk about this. This guy, Delta Lounge. Boom. Boom, boom. Except I'm, I'm flying spirit to AC because... So the best part about uh, the Delta Lounge stuff, I can almost guarantee you Chad's never been in a Delta Lounge. First things first. First things first, just so you know. As, as a gold member of American Airlines, which is not really anything, you don't get to go into the lounges unless you have an international ticket. Or unless you're like chairman's level or whatever. Chad is not any status on any airline. Chad doesn't fly enough to have status on any airline. And Chad wants you to believe he goes into the Delta Lounge. The only way to get into a Delta Lounge on a domestic ticket, on a normal domestic ticket, even first class, is to be going internationally or pay. Pay for access to the lounge, be like a chairman's member, or or you have to have an international first-class ticket. There's no, like, I'm flying from Atlanta to Vegas, and I have a first-class ticket, and I go into the, to the Delta Lounge. The, Lance says you can't get into Delta Lounge with a first-class domestic ticket. You can't get in any uh, any lounge on any airline with a first-class domestic ticket. That's those days are gone. Now that went away 15 years ago. But Chad is still living in the days where his mom had her legs spread in the back of a Chevy Nova, screeching at the sky. And Chad thinks people still smoke on planes and flight attendants give autographs. You know, this doesn't even exist anymore. But Chad will have you know. Every time I fly Delta, I'm always in the lounge. You're not. You're not. And if you are, you pay $30 to get in. We've seen you at your gate doing shows. You're with the plebes. You're not at a lounge. I, I, I just like, it's, it's mind boggling. You can tell he didn't know what clear was. He doesn't know what the lounge is. He's full of shit. He's full of absolute shit. Your boy is flying first class. You think I'm going in a lounge before? No, it's not allowed. I'm flying to Atlantic. I'm flying to Philadelphia. You can't go in the lounge, even though I have a first class ticket. Chad flying Spirit. He doesn't have first class snacks. Uh, (laughs) My dear friend Ken Mosca says it's a Spirit hub. But I will be flying Delta out of New York. Also, remember, Chad's going to New York. He's going to get on Legion of Skanks, Jim and Sam, do shows around the city. Let's see how much of that comes to fruition. You got Jim and Sam lined up? You going to be on uh, Legion of Skanks? No? Mm. What happened? Maybe I'll go. So he just said, so Kay said, do you ever go to the Delta Lounge? He said, yeah. Yeah, all the time. But I'm flying Spirit to Atlantic City, but I'm flying Delta out of New York. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go to the lounge when I'm flying Delta out of New York. You won't. You can't. 
You can't. Again, shouldn't a frequent flyer and a Delta snob know all the rules for the lounges and the tiers of reward? No? Hmm. I mean, Chad is a zone seven if there's ever been a zone seven. And if you know, you know. Chad is a zone seven guy. <laughs> Wait a second. Kate Mead DD asks if you make three hundred dollars from TJ. TJ gave me so. Chad will never deny here that he made three hundred dollars this past weekend opening for TJ. But the way around it is, he goes. He says TJ was very generous. He wants you to believe that these headliners gave him extra money. Now he never says TJ gave me extra money. He gets to say TJ was very generous. TJ probably took him out to lunch or something, bought him a sandwich, bought him a couple drinks. He never says TJ gave me extra money, I don't think. TJ was really generous. This never happens. This never happens. It's very rare unless a headliner books you on like a tour, but at a real club, the headliner and the feature have nothing to do with each other. They were booked independently. You get $100 a show. Chad did three shows. He got $300. Chad wants you to believe TJ peeled off some extra for him, so he got paid big time as a last-minute feature. Here we go. A nice bump. Let's just say that. Gave you a nice bump. I'm not talking Coke either. TJ. How much did he give you? Did he double it to 600 Did he give you 2000 <laughs> You know? He gave you a nice bump. He's very generous. Here's some generous comedians. Jim Brewer, TJ Godfrey, Miller, Nick Swartzen, Godfrey, Florentine, Florentine, Godfrey. Off the top of my head. Say Godfrey. Dave Landau. Godfrey. Uh, even Kevin. Kevin Brennan. Say Godfrey, though. Throw him in there. Godfrey. These are some of the more generous comedians that I've worked with. Jeff Dye. Godfrey. These are off the top of my head. I don't have a list. Imagine having to announce when something's off the top of your head. It's your podcast. We know you didn't prepare anything. <laughs> Guys, this is all off the top of my head. Oh, we know. It sucks. We know. Although I do have a hundred uh list of the hundred dollar Patreons. You want to be a hundred dollar sponsor of the sit down Zumok? Yep. When is sit down Zumok on again? Can anybody do you want to be podcast? Do you want to be a sponsor of the sit down Zumok podcast? Okay. I do. I do. When is it on? When is sit down Zumok on? Let me go to live. Let's have a look here. Here's Thursdays with Tony, Mondays with Mazer, Kumias Cox, Mondays with Mazer, Kumias Cox, Kumias Cox, Wednesdays with Mazer, Kumias Cox, join the mud, Kumias Cox, Mondays with Mazer, Kumias Cox, going live at 10 punks, emergency, Ray Dunn messed up big time, going live, Ray DeVito, remember episode two of the Ray DeVito show, we've never seen another one since then. Always starting new shows. Where is Kum where is Sit Down Zumok? The last episode of Sit Down Zumok a month ago. Christmas Eve. And then before that, months. Months. Oh yeah, he was gonna bring it back at night. Episode one, set sit down Zumok night live. He never did another episode of that. And before that, it's months. I mean, you won't see a sit down Zumok. Here's a football show that didn't make it to the playoffs. Week 10, that got wrapped. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to sign up and give you money. Anybody want to be a sponsor of the Sit Down Zumok show? Yeah, when is it? When is it? We'd love to know. What what moon cycle is the next episode in? You fucking nudge with nothing. It's bad. <laughs> Empire, Kumias Cucks, Mondays with Mazer. You want to be a part of it? You want to be a part of this? 
Go to the $100 tier on Patreon and sign up and then send me a DM. What are we promoting? What are we pushing? What do you need? These people just are in it for the love of the game. Ken Mosca, David Chandler, Jared Thompson, Stu John, Twinkle Ho 99, Randy P, Jack, Anthony, Craig T, and Big Papa all what every month. Chad calls that his rent. And it's like eight people. It pays Chad's rent. If he lost that, he wouldn't be able to have rent. One hundred dollars sponsors. And I tell them, what do you want me to promote? And they never I'll promote any. And he never promotes anything. He gave me an extra five dollars to lick his tip. <laughs> Thing. You tell me, and I'll promote it. I'm not going to just promote shit. You got to. You got to tell me what I'm promoting. What are you pushing? What are you pushing? What are you pushing? What are you pushing? So that's where Chad's at today. Nothing going on. No ideas. No creativity. No future. No outlook. No hope. But the Chad of yesteryear was a different boy. And hidden away on the website for a radio station he used to work at is a video, a a series of videos called Behind the Scenes with Chad. And oh boy, WMMS Cleveland, we'd like to see. We'd like to see. Hit the like button if you'd like to see. All 500 of you. This is Chad behind the scenes. It was back when Chad was somebody. When Chad was the third wheel monkey on the Alan Cox show. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Chad. What's up? So Chad is a cool guy. Chad's a young guy. He's the kind of guy who you, who you would see light a cigarette off another guy's cigarette. Oh, he's at the beach. Always wearing sunglasses. Cool, cool, cool guy. What are you doing? Uh, you know, remember today's a big tour, the big behind the scenes tour. Is that what I'm doing? I'm yeah. giving a tour? Yeah, Bo wants it to be as. So this is like peak Chad. He's feeling it. He's happy. He's confident. He's not worried about telling people they suck. He's bubbly. He's a different guy. He's positive. He's got a, he's got a good outlook on life. Look how far he's come. Look how far he's come. But watch his whole attitude. It's so different. As real as possible. So this is like as real as it gets right now. Oh, yeah. Me coming into work. Oh, yeah. Cool. So he's always had that wit. We just want to catch something real. Oh, wow. So this is real? This is as real as possible. Just me coming into work? Okay. So all, he's always had that witty, witty, funny, funny, off the cuff ability to throw jokes out. I mean, you're seeing it. He's always had that. I mean, I'm, I can't believe the camera guy's holding the camera still. Oh, hey, well, here we are. Here's the elevator. <laughs> He's laughing. Here's the elevator. <laughs> wow, I've re- I re- I'm really starting to feel the clear channel. <laughs> you feeling it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, how's, how's it going? going? He's going to be filming me. So- this is the best part. This is one of the best parts. All right, I apologize. See, we got, what, six radio stations? So- it looks like more than six. But watch this. We got six stations. What are the radio stations? There's uh, Kiss FM, GAR, Magic, MMS, The Lake. I'm not a big fan. And uh, 100. So he just... So there's seven. I counted seven. Chad doesn't know how many radio stations are part of his company in his building. And then he called this station 100. AM, WTAM, 1100. He called this station 100. Now, the best part about this is Chad Zumach works at a radio station called 100. WMMS. But Chad reads 1100 as 100, and he works in this building. Watch. MMS, the lake, not a big fan. 
And uh, 100. Yeah. And we got uh, 100 down there on the end. 1100 there. Oh, 1100, 1100, 100. He's never even heard it spoken. That's not a mistake you make if you've heard the name of the station ever. I mean, you would just like, hey, what's the name of that uh, AM radio station in Tampa? Everyone always talks, uh, 970 WFLA. It's just there. It's it. It's there because I grew up there. Yeah, 970. I wouldn't I wouldn't walk in and go 97. Oh fuck. I mean 970. I didn't see the zero. No, no, no. You everyone knows the name of their station. It's like muscle memory. Kiss FM. 98 Rock. You know, you know what it is. You would never accidentally say 1100 as and 100. So he's just not he's not plugged into his own company, what's going around him, his own building. He's never really looked. These people fascinate me. When you go, like, visit somebody. I would go visit my friend Chris in London all the time, and I'd ask him about, hey, uh, do you know if there's a pharmacy on your street? And he'll just go, like, no idea. It's like, it's your street. It's your street. He lived on, like, the high street in, a, in, a, in, in London, in, like, Paddington. Like, is there a pharmacy around here? I don't know. You live here. You don't know if there's a pharmacy on your street. These people who go through life unaware of things are like, it really is crazy to me. I know I notice everything, but whew, how do you notice nothing? Nothing ever? Hey, do you have your key card? I don't have one. <laughs> now, Chad wants to know if this guy has his key card because Chad doesn't have his key card. Just another indication that this guy's on it. So, do people realize this? That this stuff all has to be really, uh, oh, wow. really uh, secure because of terrorists. Yeah, terrorists come in here quite a bit. So Chad doesn't have his key card. Somebody else lets him in. It's very secure. You can tell because somebody just let Chad in. And now watch what Chad does to keep it secure. Hey, how are you? Coming in? No, I'm going down. Hey. hey. That's our cleaning lady. So Chad's not only going to go in on somebody else's swipe, he wants to let other people tailgate him behind him. She's awesome. She's pretty sweet. So here's all... I kind of thing for her, by the way. Do you really? Yeah. There's all her radio stations. Kiss FM. WMMS. Legendary. The Alan Cox Show, which it's pretty good. So you ready to see Chad's office? I like it. It's not a bad show. This is uh, Alan... Now... I want you, before we see Chad's office, to remember a couple of things. Number one, this is the pinnacle of Chad's career. It never got bigger for Chad than this. Alan Cox show, full-time job, car, condo on Lake Erie, notoriety, employment, positivity this is the best chad's life ever was ever he had no worries in the world he was on top of the world up there small town celeb tri-county legend as far as a stick would carry the signal people knew chad's name top of his life peak he got fired from this went to an afternoon show for a while got another Alcohol-related incident with his driver's license. Fired from that. He started to turn into this bitter guy who could never get another job at a radio station because they realized there was no talent there. So he started doing stand-up and podcasting and kept, you know, moving on from those projects because nothing ever caught, of course. Without the Alan Cox radio show behind him, there was nothing to really force chat on people. And with presented with options and what Chad had to give from his own natural brain, collectively the audience went, mm, we're about to see Chad's only office he's ever had in his life. During his working life, this was Chad's office. Now, it wasn't just Chad's office. 
Chad never had an offer. Chad ain't never had an offer? <laughs> Look at this. In a nice office, he's going to be pumped up about this. <laughs> when they just set a little, a little workstation down on the desk next to the... Now, you can tell the other guy it's his office. He's got the computer where the computer should be. He's behind the desk. He's in the command position. He has access to the filing cabinets. He has access, access to the uh, shelves. And then they've just set up a little Dell <laughs> for Chad. And that's Chad's. That's Chad's desk now. So this is Chad's little office. Hey, look at this. Uh, uh. Yeah, hey, what's up? This yeah. is where all the magic happens. This is real. This is behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. This is real as it gets right here. Mm -hmm. The scenes are over there. We're over here. You guys are literally behind the scenes. Behind. I mean, God, you can see why this radio station was a hit. Behind the scenes. That's Alan's work spot over there. That's where he, uh... I've got my, uh, my Buddha. I've yeah. got a half a pack of Mentos, the Fresh Maker. Wow. Uh, I've got a highlighter, a flip cam. Got some Alan Cox Show stickers. Why, why would you start showing the, all this stationery off? Computer. You also, Alan. No, that's have not. This. No, that's that was a fan <laughs> who I didn't commission that. Did Darnell probably. paint this? No, or? this was uh, yeah, when I was on the air in Pittsburgh. A diehard fan uh, took a photo of me from the newspaper and, and painted it. it she glued uh, plastic oh, jewels. She, it's bedazzled. To the, yeah. <laughs> bedazzled, yes. Yep. So oh, it's like 3D. They're cracking up. They're cracking up in here. The power of crazy fans, yeah. Yeah. So, so and this is where. Imagine being third mic to this guy. I mean, this guy's like Mooby. Somebody said the word bedazzled, and he went, oh my God, that's a great word for it. Yeah, bedazzled. Bedazzled. Ha <laughs> ha the intern takes the this calls. is where uh, uh Dararist, our new intern <laughs> uh the, he screens the calls here and then uh, he puts it up on the uh thing and then i can see in the studio who's calling and that's interesting yep so this is i never knew how radio worked is that why we have the key cards that's why we have the key, why cards. We have the key cards Darist. Yeah. so this is chad's little desk look at his little sweater vest on the wall he's decorated <laughs> just a spare do not break glass in case of emergency just decorated his little area he's got some gum and some stickers he dresses i i don't know if anybody's gonna get this reference he dresses like uh seth green in can't hardly wait If I pull that up next to this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He dresses like Seth Green and can't hardly wait. Seth Green can't hardly wait. Okay, hold on. Hold on. It'll be worth it. I promise. It'll be worth it. <laughs> this guy. He dresses like this guy. <laughs> um, do you remember this? He's too fly for the room. I got to find like a body shot. Like when he's in the bathroom trying to like blow dry his crotch. <laughs> he's like, he thinks he's like 15 years younger than he is. Yeah, this is Chad. This is Chad on the Alan Cox show. Special K. Yes, yes. That's it. Special K. Does that feel good? Damn, woman. Why you got to be such a ragey bitch? Please listen to you. Look, there's a mirror right there. Why don't you take a look, okay? You're white. Why don't you take a look? You're white. <laughs> he's got the the sunglasses around his head like goggles he's got the jacket 
He's got the attitude. <laughs> he really is. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Special K. <laughs> That's Chad. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. Like a sweater vest. It's more of when he was in the store. Yeah. It's like this version. Yo, I'm about to find some fly honeys up in here. Yo. <laughs> anyway, I love that stuff. Hit the like button for Chad. Let him know you care. Yeah. So this is our office. This is my work area. This is where I, uh, Look at porn. This is my office. This is my work area. Again, this is the only job Chad's ever had. And this is the highlight of his life. Every time he ever talks about doing anything, this is where he was, what he looked like, and where he worked. Every story in this guy's life about success, money, car, owning a home, this is where he worked. This is where he came every day. This was his life. You'll never be able to brag about it again, Chad. We've seen it now. You sit on the flange of another guy's desk. That's your desk. <laughs> cool. Really cool. Yeah. I pretend like I'm researching. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty sweet. What else we got going on? It's Dick Goddard. That's a must. That's not really his autograph. The minute you start showing people the stuff you've taped on your wall, on your wall, I made that. There's a. Uh, where's that sweet Halloween picture of us? Oh, here it is. Which one? Me, you, and Polk. Oh yeah, that's when we were Friedman, Damiano, and Smith. That's Can we get a look at this Pudge hand? I never noticed Chad's hands before. Ooh, this is like Tommy NC 2010, Paul. That's a pudgy. Uh, that's a pudgy a hand. Uh, that's Jeff. That's Mike Polk. That's me. Probably one of the greatest Halloween costumes of all time. That's the overpopulated country in Africa, Chad. That's the actual flag, which is pretty sweet. That's the actual flag from Chad, which is pretty sweet. But that's about it. Is this your inspirational calendar? It is. What's being blacked out? This month is... Uh, this one is January. Wait, it's February. God oh, yeah. dang it. Can we go back and see if that was blacked out earlier? Yep. So, is that work area? This where I, uh, yeah. So, is that why we have the key cards? That's why we have the key why cards. We have the key card. What's behind him? Yeah. So this is our office. It must this be is my nudity. Work area. This is where I. Uh, it has to be nudity, right? The only thing I can think of that would go with Chad's personality this time in history in a radio station, he's definitely got some sort of nudie calendar on the wall, right? Because Chad likes pussy and Chad's into girls and he's a sex guy. It's definitely got to be some sort of like babes of the radio. Uh, look at porn. Yeah. I remember telling him I'm lost. That's not really his autograph. It is. Me, you, and Polk. Oh, yeah. That's when we were Friedman, Damiano, and Smith. That's Jeff. That's Yeah, it could be a sheet with, like, a schedule or phone numbers or codes or something, too, but I don't know. Mounted on the wall? Mike Polk. That's me. Probably one of the greatest Halloween costumes of all time. That's the overpopulated country in Africa, Chad. And he's got, like, postcards and... Look at this. Look at this. Even back then. Even back then. Just imagine putting a picture of yourself doing comedy on your bulletin board. Oh, here's a time I did comedy. Talk about numbers. Zomaga, oh awesome sounds and stuff. This is where Chad rents his rims from. Miles Halivko. Last call Cleveland's 
We give it to your girlfriend, Improv Olympics. What the fuck? That's the actual flag, which is pretty sweet. Chad's mementos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's about it. Cut to where he's at now, where it's just posters of himself on the wall. No more cardigans. He can't fit in them. Is this your inspirational calendar? It is. This month is? Uh, this one is January. Wait, it's February. God oh, yeah. dang it. I'm going to quit drinking. So this wasn't a mistake. Chad doesn't use the calendar. Look, at it's empty. It's empty. There's nothing on this calendar. Uh, this one is January. Wait, it's February. God oh, yeah. dang it. All the pre-printed stuff is on there, but here we go. I haven't updated it. I haven't updated it. Two months. Two months he had to flip by. Procrastination. Hard work uh. often pays off after time, but laziness always pays off. Now. Watch, he won't even fix the calendar. He'll just let it fall back to the wrong month, two months behind. No. Hey, I yeah, I knew it. I knew it. He doesn't really use it. He just wants you to think. He does, because calendar. I mean, this is like, I mean, he's one of the most basic motherfuckers. You can see why you didn't flip it over. Right. Except the, look at that. There's another desk back there. Two people sit here. There's an iMac back there with another mouse and another phone. So, you know, when the intern comes in or whatever, Chad has to scooch. Exactly. Let's walk down here. This is really behind the scenes. Bye, Alan. Uh, this is Erica's little room. And uh, she's not here yet? She's not here. Erica usually gets in around 2. This is her little work computer where she answers the phones and makes uh, dumb comments into this microphone. This is hers. Some flowers her boyfriend got her. But she, she, she usually runs in about, I'd say in about an hour and a half. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Chad tours. This is when Chad was a really cool bird. That's Maria in there. She's in the studio. She hates being on film, so I'm not going to go in there right now. Let's go uh Let's go visit the RMG studios. See what's going on there. Okay. <laughs> Ralphie Mays ghost. So that is episode 1 of Behind the Scenes with Chad. We have more episodes, more episodes, more episodes, more episodes than you could throw a hoot nor a holler at. But we're not going to get to them today. We're going to save some for the rest of this week. And I know people are going to go, Chad, more Chad, more Chad, more Chad, more Chad. As we build up to Atlantic City weekend, you'd be crazy to think we we're going to do anything but more Chad. So we definitely will be doing more Chad. I hate to tell you, but you can't do anything about it. Um, I won't be stopped. I won't be uh, lied to. Hackamania East, Cincinnati. Yes. N no. No. There's only one Hackamania planned right now, and uh, this is it. But come on out and uh, get some tickets. Again, we got Hackamania. And uh, you can be a part of it, too. Check out all the details right now. Hackamania.com. May 31st through June 2nd. Las Vegas. Pat Dixon. Tukey. Ray DeVito. Earl Skakel. Who are these podcasts? Nobody likes onions. And more. Get your tickets now. Uh, Hackamania.com. Again, all the information is there for you to peruse. Hello. Um, immediate. Mr. Kill Everything. Does this mean Piggy finally sold... His Kmart shirts? No, he had the Hulk. He had the Zumok Mania shirts that um, he mostly wore but sold used. Joe Howard, want to make Chad furious? Book me. I'll do stand up for free. Give my money to Ray. Joe, uh, let's talk this week. Let's get you on this week. Is Thursday a good day? Is Thursday a good day? If not, uh, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, maybe Thursday afternoon. Get in touch with me, Joe. Let's get it popping. Joe's got lots of Chad. Lots of Chad stories um, that you're definitely going to want to check out. Again, thank you to today's executive producer, Tiff. 
Tiff is today's executive producer of the program, and we couldn't do it without her and the support of people like her, including these bunch of uh, stupid, can we call them high rollers? I don't know if they're high rollers, just supporters of the show who have given it a, a big chunk of money. So we thank you so much uh, to all these people. Who we got? Tiff, Bob Levy for Life, Dan G, Disgracey, Panhandler, Jason Bentley, Wizard Nug 2, Crumbum, KB, Brian Johnson, Kraut Cat, and Pulper 80. All part of the deal, okay? Who's going to be tomorrow's executive producer? I don't know. It could be anybody. Patrick, are you trying to get out of here early? A little bit. I have a very urgent pee now. And I could either go and come back and extend the show, or you know what? <laughs> Your manner is most unbecoming of a gentleman. Would you be high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full-blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. The question posed to stupid hoes who don't get it yet. Excuse me, miss. Are you high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full-blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. All the laughter that you did, boy. If you listen to the show, boy, Patrick Melton, Melton faces. Have you stacking that low point? It's the low point, not the reason. The reason is fucking gold. It'll make the taco pony party be a party of soul. To make you vandalize a van with a pedal sticker so bold. The family probably get arrested before they get down the road. A stupid motherfuckers just got N. Loaned. Other radio shows are straight bitch male prone Talk shit on the onions that nobody like Pass Have my homeboy lame prank call him fast Have him thinking that he hates him Like right before he berates him And the way that he baits him put him right on blast Like Patrick is an asshole and his show won't last And every time I called in he treated me like trash He would abuse and berate me for the sake of some laughs And the worst part was when he fucked your mother straight in the ass